Good day and welcome to Canada in Stadium for the 2002 Subway Senior Bowl on Shaw TV. Hello again, everybody. I'm Sean Coates, and we are here live at can in Stadium for the 2002 Subway Senior Bowl on this Shaw TV special. This is a great, exciting high school football game. It's a graduating high school all-star game, and to talk more about that, one of the guests that's joining me right now, the commissioner of the Winnipeg High School Football League, Ron Gustafson. And Ron, what does it mean for these young athletes to participate in a game such as this that we're seeing here today? Well, I think it's a great opportunity for them. This, is, this will be their final high school football game, and they're playing with and amongst the best high school football players in the province. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for them to showcase their talents and uh, play with teams that they've played against all year long and uh, have an opportunity to get one more kick at the cat. A person who played very well in high school, college, and the pro levels, uh, current Winnipeg Blue Bombers linebacker coach and recent inductee into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame, Les Brown. Les, what does it mean for these kids to take part in a game at this level, and what do they have to look forward to? Well, I think uh, these kids realize how important it is. Because I was talking to Frank Robinson, who's the, the, the head coach of the Team Lightning, and he said not one time did he have to ask these kids to come to practice. Even in the days, you know, the last couple of days was pretty bad and rain and stuff, and uh, they were all showed up. So these guys know the importance of the game. They never know who's going to be sitting in the stands. There might be some scout from uh, some small school. They, they can uh, gradually build up and go to a major school and then on to the CFL or the NFL. Who knows? Okay, so promises to be an exciting game. Part of our broadcast crew, of course, is the Team 1290's Darcy Taves, and he's down at sideline. Let's go to Darcy now. Darcy? It's going to be my job to make sure that everyone knows exactly what's going down here on the field, as well as providing a nice sideline target for the players. It's my hopes to get comically run down sometime in the broadcast. That way I can make Shaw's plays of the week. Shaw has plays of the week, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Back to you, Sean. <laughs> Well, if we don't, Darcy, we certainly will make one because of you, because I know he'll definitely get involved in the action. Uh, we're going to talk about two items. Uh, first of all, briefly, Ron, the fundraiser aspect of this game. Tell us about that. Okay, well, with the Barmer alumni, their goal is to promote football, amateur football in the province. In the last two years, proceeds from the game have gone to the University of Manitoba Bison's program. And this year, with the, the startup of the Winnipeg Rifles Junior Team, the proceeds from today's game will go to the Winnipeg Rifles. Okay, unless the dream team of coaches, if you will, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers alumni people you've played with or have seen played before. Uh, tell me about some of the folks that uh, we're seeing here. Well, you know, Paul Bennett uh, is the head coach of Team Thunder, and uh, he got inducted into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame along with me this year and uh, was a hell of a three safety. And uh, he's a good kid. He's a good coach for the kids. Um, he has Joe Poplowski, who's with him, and Trevor Kennard also, who, uh, if you guys remember, kicked that field goal to get us into in the Eastern Final to get us into the 1990 Grey Cup to also win it. And he also got on that team helping him, Dave Donaldson, who's uh, helping out with the secondary. And he has uh, um, Wayne Weathers, who's helping out with the defensive line. And he's also got Brett McNeil, who's helping out with the offensive line. And these guys know their football, so he's got a pretty good uh, dream team. I don't want to tell them that they're called the dream team coaching staff because their heads are get really over excited. <laughs> some of the other people involved, of course, this is for Team Lightning, Frank Robinson, someone who still does some game day scouting for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Nick, and Nick Benjamin. Benjamin. Dan Hucklick, Jim Heighton, another great, Nate Johnson, and of course, Rick House, uh, a member of the Winnipeg Football Club Hall of Fame, and maybe one day the Canadian Football Hall of Fame, just as you and Paul were inducted this year. So the coaches are ready. It looks like the players are ready. Let's go down to field level for the introduction of today's players. Getting the introduction, I believe this is Team uh, Thunder in the white. Uh, as you can see, some of the players running onto the field right now here at Canada In Stadium. Uh, team uh, Thunder will be wearing white with blue numbers and blue pants, and the other team, uh, which is Team Lightning, we'll see in just a few moments. There's Team Thunder, a number of their players on the field here. Uh, team Lightning will wear blue with white and gray pants, and we'll get their introductions here in just a moment. Hopefully we'll be able to pick up on the public address announcers' introductions here, but certainly an exciting day for football, gentlemen. While they're going through the lineup here, Ron, maybe if you can, tell us about the selection process for uh, for this game. 
Well, it's a very tough process. The, the players are nominated by their head coaches, and uh, then we had a, a meeting of, of all the head coaches involved, and they selected the team. So you not only had to be a standout on your team, but uh, you were also selected by the coaches from the teams that you played against. A couple of components that we look at, one is uh, we say it's a graduating all-star game, and it is. The, these players all will be graduating in June, and we felt that uh, through high school sports, athletics, and academics, that was one of the criteria that we would have to put on that, that uh, they must be graduating. So it's more than just uh, uh, the fact that they were good players and they just happened to be finishing their high school careers. They have to do well in the classroom. And, and Les, I guess that's, uh, that's really something we don't see in a lot of other provinces or states, but it's a good move here. Oh, definitely a good move here. Getting a look at Team Lightning here. Steve Froome and his teammates getting introduced here. An exciting game last year, a wild ending. The game wasn't decided until the game's final play. Will it be the same this year? We'll find out as we get a look at the Anovets honor guard on the field. And uh, they, of course, are have been uh, majorly involved with the Subway Senior Bowl right from the start. And, and uh, it's a good move by the alumni to get involved with that group. They've been, a, they've been a good addition to, to football with the Winnipeg High School Football League and our partnership. Uh, they, they, we go out and see the colored party out on the field, and uh, I think it's important for our players to, to acknowledge the past, and our associates with them has, has allowed us to do that. So, Les, uh, I know when we were uh, waiting to do our introductions here, we were having a look at the wind, and the, the flags on the goalposts are blowing quite strongly, and the ones over at the arena seem to be going in a different direction. It's, it seems like it's a typical windy day here at Canadian <laughs> Stadium. You know, it's kind of funny because it almost seems like it's uh, middle of September here. Uh, that you know, Normally, that's when the wind starts flying out of the north, and you start having to play football by... Uh, being smart, you know, and choosing which which side to take. And I think uh, these guys are going to have to play the elements right off the bat. I think, uh, you know, you mentioned the wind. Uh, well, I coached for 20 years in the league, and when you get up in the morning on game day, it wasn't a matter of if the wind was blowing, it was what direction and how much. Exactly, and I believe the, uh, the coin toss was won by Team Lightning, if I understand it correctly, and they have deferred to the second half to play that advantage to see what will happen with the wind. ready for the playing of our national anthem. Great job on the anthem done by Diana Jones of Churchill High School. The teams are leaving the field and they're getting ready to strap it on and get after it. We're going to take a short break and we come back. High school football action here on Shaw TV. Squirrels. There's a tag 
act as a child. Why not bring the action home? With Shaw's pay-per-view, you can order the movies you want from the comfort of your home. And you're always guaranteed the best seats in the house. Call Shaw to find out more or visit shaw.ca. National Geographic. 113 years. 6,000 expeditions. A legendary commitment to those who dare. Now the National Geographic Channel brings a world of experience home. The National Geographic Channel. Enjoy this digital channel today. One by one. They all went down. And now it's down to this. Lewis Tyson is on a perfume. This exclusive event is available only on Shaw Digital. Don't miss out. Get digital today. Where will you be when history goes down? Why are people choosing digital cable over satellite TV? With digital cable, you get all your local channels. Satellite TV? Probably not. Digital cable means great picture and sound with no outside dishes or antennas. Plus over 200 channels, interactive features, hassle-free additional outlets, and local customer service that's guaranteed. No wonder people prefer digital cable over satellite TV. You get more stuff without so much stuff. Action already underway here at the 2002 Subway Senior Bowl kickoff taken by Richard Silvestra back around his own 13-yard line. He advances at about five yards, and it looks like Team Lightning will start with Wall first and 10 at their own 18-yard line. And again, Sean, right off the bat, we're looking at how the wind is going to play a factor in the game. The ball bounced on the ground. They took it. Now they have them in, pinned inside the 20-yard line. And it was a case where they actually had to have someone pin the ball on the kickoff because it had blown off the tee twice. So let's set the stage. Team Lightning wearing blue with white numerals and gray pants. They are moving from left to right on your television screen. Team Thunder in white on defense as we speak. Pitch, I believe, is to Sylvester. He gets nothing. This will probably be a tackle for a loss. And Ron, uh, some good defense on the part of Team Thunder. I was uh, impressed. They, they flew to the ball uh, nicely. Good pursuit. Uh, Eric Lawrence is the toss to Richard Sylvester, trying to get outside to take advantage of his speed. But uh, the defense was right there and a tackle for a one-yard loss. Looks like Tyler Schultz was in on the action there, along with a gang of other thunder, thundering Thunder players, if you will, as we get a look at Team Lightning. It's a break huddle. And under center, the quarterback, I believe, is Merrick Lawrence. He'll start things off here. Back at about his own 17-yard line. Second and 11. There's the drop. Lawrence rolls out to his right. Passing down, throws downfield. He's got a wide open receiver. That, of course, is number 88. We'll love it. And, and Ron, unless we were looking at that gentleman in the uh, in the warm-ups. Big kid, great hands. I went to the practice uh, the other day, Sean, and they were talking about this kid and the quarterback played together, so they know each other quite well, and they know, they know exactly how to get the ball up in the air. If you see this, he threw that ball with plenty of air on it and let that kid run right up underneath it. It was a perfect pass and a perfect catch. And there's that corner pattern we talked about during warm-ups. They yep. hit it first, first go. 45-yard gain on the toss and catch there by Lawrence to love it. First and 10 inside lightning territory and uh, I don't know if that was an intentional misdirection or whether someone had uh, missed an assignment at the start but it looks like they did gain positive yardage out of it on that play the ball carrier I believe um, um, number 15 Jeff Correa they actually look like they got away with uh, illegal procedure the uh, offensive guard looked like he moved a little bit early that's what kind of had us thrown off as one of the guys went before uh, the rest of the crew did in any case, it's a pickup of about eight, maybe, maybe make it seven, it's second and three. Lightning with the ball, running play again. It looks like it may be enough for the first down, and they should be moving the sticks. Well, nice run by Richard Fester, squared up to the line of scrimmage, met that uh, tackler and drove him back and uh, picked up the first down. He's a big boy, he goes about 16, probably about 210. 
you know, on both sides of the ball, we have coaches who's played on this field and played against and with these elements in the wind. And Huck Luck is using it very well right now in the first quarter uh, with going with the wind. Past when they have to, of course, have been running otherwise. Lawrence under center again. Three wide receivers to the right. This is a passing down. No. Lawrence pulls it down. And he takes off it, and he's got some room. Pursuit to the outside. It's taken out of bounds at about the 32-yard line after a gain of about, it looks like, maybe five. And very fearless with the ball. Had a chance to run out of bounds and decided to stay in and take some hits. Last game. Hey, there's the last high school game. Let's see it. We're going to make the most of it. But, uh, That's good right. job of coverage that time by uh, uh, on the defensive secondary. I love it trying to get run that corner deep in the end zone, but uh, not there, and he had to pull it down and go. It is a gain of five, second and five now. Traditional pro set. Two receivers top, two receivers bottom. Two men in the backfield. Crossover, misdirection play here. Run on the play by, I think it's Sylvester with the ball. And that's just very good running. He started off on one side and cut back across the grain. You don't really uh, teach that. It's just basically uh, the running back has to see it with his eyes and adjust to it. And he did very well with that. Bit of a read and react situation there. Picking up picking up the first down. And we saw a little bit of confusion in the in the backfield, and I think we'll see some of that uh, throughout the day. These guys haven't played. They've only been together for four practices, so it's tough to get your timing. And for some, this is a whole new offense from what they're used to running. It certainly is, and they go with the same formation. I thought it was a misdirection but it was just the fact that uh, they might have been a bit confused on the call. In this case, Sylvester, again, he runs this side, this time to the left side in between the tackle and guard and picks up about two. This time the defensive line stuffed the holes. They stuffed the gaps and uh, prevented him from getting any further into the into the secondary. And John Domino did a nice job as a linebacker for, for the team and came, scraped across behind that defensive line and made the tackle for, again, just about two, a little two and a half. So second and seven, seven and a half here. See how it goes. Two receivers top. Now backs empty the backfield to block for Lawrence. He throws, looking for a wide open. Oh. Number 87, Carlo Bruno, who would have had six if he could have hung on to it. But I'm sure that wind, you can see it blowing the ball around, played a bit of tricks on him. I tell you, these kids had a chance to practice in this win because uh, two of those four practices was pretty bad weather, and they had a chance to practice. And it looked like this quarterback has it down pat of how much to put uh, air on it so that his receivers can run up underneath it. And I don't think you could get a perfect path, uh, better pass than that with this win. No, I think you're right, Sean. If you if you watch Carlo on that play, he tried to adjust as the ball was blowing towards the sidelines, but uh, nice throw, nice throw. So certainly the uh, Team Lightning crew looking pretty good here. They're going to attempt a field goal from about 36 yards. And it's Richard Sylvester, pretty much do everything guy here for Team Lightning. Little movement at the line, trying to draw them offside. Ball snapped, booted, kick is up, and it is good. Richard Sylvester, 36 yard field goal, and Team Lightning draws first blood. Three nothing, our score. Nice start. Uh, you know, we commented earlier, they started down about the 18 yard line. Uh, the big play was the Lawrence to, Lo to Love It pass that uh, picked up about 45 yards and a uh, couple good runs and that uh, materialized with points. So we've got a good start. We're on the scoreboard and uh, let's see what the other side's got. I can tell you, Paul Bennett right now is applauding his defense for right now for bending but not breaking and only giving up three points. Because with this win, if they stay close, they get the ball in the fourth quarter with the win. That's the thing, you want to contain them as much as possible when you don't have that advantage, and you want to take full advantage of it when you have that advantage. Team Thunder elects to take the ball at their own 35, which is a good choice considering the win they're facing. We have a handoff here, sprinting to the outside, but getting run down on the play. I believe it was number 26, John Shillard. Hard to make out the numbers from where we are. Actually, correction, Patterson, number 28, as you can see on your screen. Strung the ball out, and the uh, the defense went after him, took him down the line for it looks like no gain. Uh, no, again, good pursuit. We saw good pursuit on the first offensive series for Team Lightning. Uh, this time, the defense for Team Thunder. They came out, and uh, I think it was Albertson, number 81, that uh, I thought might be outside, but he did a good job and got to him before he turned the corner. Backs in the eye, two receivers to each side. Now the backs split. Play underway, delayed counter. Yeah, actually, correction, keeper by the quarterback. He takes it out. Can he get to the sticks? It looks like he has gained enough for a first down. He did a heck of a job with that. Uh, like he picked us out up here. 
But that was a heck of a play because uh, it, it looked like a counter. They pulled both the guard and the tackle, and the quarterback faked the handoff and kept it around the end. That's probably why he got such good yardage on it, because he fooled everybody, including us. He certainly fooled me. Ryan Caldas, the River East Kodiak's quarterback, doing the ledger domain and the slate of hand at quarterback. First and 10, ball to 45. We're just about, oh, five minutes in, maybe, into this first quarter. The 2002 Subway Senior Bowl. Sean Coates, Ron Gustus, and Les Brown and Darcy Taves here bringing you all this action from can -Ad in Stadium. Coldus with a handoff. Looks like that's Patterson again. He fights hard, getting it out to about the 49-yard line for a gain of four. And they, they ran left this time behind that big offensive line with Tom Wingett and Lauren Plant from Sisler and, and had good yardage. I thought maybe he could have cut a little sooner to the sidelines less. I thought he had a little more room outside, but he, he cut back inside and seemed, seemed to shut it down. You, you notice that he picked up four yards. I think he knows who he's running behind when he's doing that. He just decided to put his head down and get behind the big boy and shove. And Lauren Plant, he's got CFL size already, and he's in high school. We'll try and get close-ups of him later, but he's playing left tackle right now for Team Thunder. Second and six. Coldus under center, flag on the play, pitch to Patterson. He runs outside, he's got enough for the first down and more, but will it come back? We'll find out. Nice lead block if you, if you know it's to Harding. Matt Harding from Churchill had a nice lead block downfield that allowed him to pick up another five, which would give him a first down, but uh, we'll have to check and see what that flag is. Right, the play's gonna stand, it looks like it's against the defense. We should mention the officials today. There are six on the field, of course, but there are nine taking part, and they're rotating in and out, showing uh, some different things that they can do, also uh, trying out some different positions, but in many ways, this is their all-star game. These are the people who have done the high school league throughout the year, and they've earned the right to be here. And it gives them an opportunity to, to referee at some different positions. So they could be a line judge. Next thing you know, they're a back judge. They could be doing some refereeing. So they get to showcase, and there are five uh, members of football or the Manitoba Football Association doing some evaluation up in the press box. So constant development process. That call offside on the defense was obviously declined after the first down. Pitch to the left this side. Patterson working his block well. Now he fights his way to the outside. Gets ridden out of bounds. But a strong gain of about seven yards. I've been impressed less with the way Terrence Patterson's been running so far. Well, you know what I liked about this is that he started in. He saw the, uh, uh, the guys inside cut back outside. He did that twice and he was hanging around the big guy again and following his block. He was setting up the big guy for his block, which was really smart, smart running. And Ron, that's one of the things that you don't often see in a high school or a college kid. They just go hard. They don't wait for the play to develop. You usually see that at the pro level. These kids have some good instincts. Yeah, good maturity. You know, he's got good instincts for the game and uh, he'll last a lot longer doing that than he'll just taking off and going. Second and two. Power formation here, backs in the eye. It's Patterson again, cuts outside. Can he make it though? No. And that might have been a case where he should have stayed with the block because it might have been there. And you know, you, you, I guess you live and die with the darting back. If, if he stayed in there, it's probably first down. He decides he tries to bounce it outside and Corey Hucklock chases him down, tackles him for a loss. And uh, looks like we've got a punting situation. I don't think there'll be a field goal from the 43 into the wind. Now the coaches are waiting for him to get to the sideline so they can let him know on a short yardage play like that, that's the time you want to put your head down and pound just to make sure you pick up the sticks. And there's coach Brian Marks from St. John's having a little talk with him. He's the running back coach on, on for team uh, Thunder. And, and, that correction will be made. Doing exactly what Les was talking about. We saw it on our screen, all player late getting off the field. And the officials whistle it down and it looks like uh, Team Lightning have to call a timeout in order to get their personnel straightened out. And that's very frustrating for a coach. Frustrating for a coach, but uh, a lot of these guys, you know, they were two-way players and they wouldn't play special teams. They'd come off, so here's a, they, they have to play special teams in this game, and some aren't used to it, so there's some confusion. But uh, again, they've only had four days to practice and get organized, so uh, I think we'll see a little more than that. It's unfortunate, but uh, <laughs> we're working with 17, 18-year-old kids. But so then, like, like Sean said, for a coach, uh, he doesn't understand uh, the shortage of time. He just understands that that's very frustrating because they might need that timeout somewhere down the line. Trevor Kennard, uh, one of the coaches, of course, one of the organizers to this event, looking on there, talking to uh, the Team Thunder crew as they're getting ready to punt here. Third and about, looks like four yards. Obvious punting situation given the wind that they're going into, which is very severe here at can -Ad in Stadium. And try and get a I think view it's Adam here. McTavish is punting from Fort Francis. It looks like it, Adam McTavish, yes. Decent player. It's good that the Northwestern Ontario kids are taking part. And he hammers one against the wind. This might be no yards as the flag goes down. 
Love it on the return. He gets hauled down after not much of a game, but you can understand why. There was a player only about two yards away. And that hurts you, you know, because that was a very good punt, like you say, against the win. And then you get a player within the five-yard rule, and I, I believe it's a 15-yard penalty. 15. Which and, uh, that puts him out of the hole. And, and you're right. It was a great punt. Had him pinned on the sidelines. Uh, caught it about three yards in. But there, there's Lovett. Big play guy. Uh, ran a uh, punt back in the championship game last year against Oak Park for St. Paul. So uh, he's got a lot of skills. Does some special teams things. And uh, we've seen him, what he can do offensively as a slot. So no yards indeed is the call. The ball will be moved out to the 30 as the fraction occurred around the 15-yard line. And once again, Team Lightning brings out their offense. Mark, or sorry, Merrick Lawrence under center again, the quarterback. Three receivers up to the high side now. Running play first back through, gets the call. Picking up about four in the play, and we'll see if we can spot the youngster there. Yes, it is, number nine, Mike Force. Either that guard is the most, he's the quickest uh, one off the snap, or he's off sides every snap. <laughs> And you see they, they uh, rotate their backs with Team Lightning. Uh, obviously with uh, the number of players we have, they're trying to give them equal playing time. So we've got a new set of backs in there now. And you just saw number nine, uh, Mike Forrest, carry the ball. And I think Tom Massey from St. Paul's is the other back, number 28. And uh, Les, you're right about uh, that movement. You know, maybe it's a, ch a case of them just not getting used to the quarterback's cadence here as we see Lawrence fling the ball out to the left. There's a flag on the play. Enough yards for the first down and more as the receiver is off to the races. It's Curtis Durham. He takes it to the house. 75 yard touchdown, but there is a flag. This might be coming back. I, I didn't see it. Was it a pick? Did they run a pick up well, top list? I, or? I got a feeling it's on the defense and the, the touchdown is gonna stand because basically I don't think they were in the pick mo uh, position yet when the flag went down. There was a receiver out there, but it didn't but seem like he was close back. enough. They are bringing it back. Maybe there was some contact that we couldn't see, uh, you know, in tight when they were close to each other here. We'll wait for the official's call. Nice run by Durham, though. He mm. caught that ball, showed some good acceleration down the sidelines and ran away from people. So that'll be interesting to see if they go back to him. I wonder if that's a legal man downfield, the signal. No, actually, what they're talking about, because they were talking to number 80 as he was coming and back. And he'll down down the field. Yeah, Blue that's number what eight. <laughs> So, an unfortunate instance here for Team Lightning, a 75-yard touchdown for Durham called back, bringing up second and about 15. These officials are very good because that's very hard to catch. He's a slot back, and a slot back cannot be on the line of scrimmage at the snap of the ball, and, and, and you throw the ball to him, or it's a penalty. And that was very good of them to catch that. Again, slot back maybe getting a little anxious, wanting to get downfield quickly, because you're always told to go forward and, and go fast as you can. But... Uh, you have to do it legitimately. So, again, empty backfield now. As the back set up to block, Lawrence rolls out to his left, throws tough against the, uh, across his body, the momentum he intended for number three, Matt Wallace, but it goes incomplete. I'm very impressed with this quarterback, Ron. He's got a very strong arm. And he threw the ball well, and it's unusual to see tour quarterbacks who are rolling left get that much on the ball to throw it. A uh, little bit tough into coverage, but uh, he did a good job. He had a lot of pressure backside chasing him out. And, you know, when I was, at the, I was at the practice last week, uh, they were talking about containment. And number 66, Rory, I believe his name is Rory Hughes, did a heck of a job of putting pressure on the quarterback and not letting him up the field or square his body to throw the ball correctly. Some of the little things that most people don't notice, but it does make a huge difference when it comes to the execution of a play as we have a third and 15 now for Team Lightning. And they are back to punt. Corey Hucklux doing the punting, and I think we've got uh, McTavish deep as one, and uh, we'll have to look to see number 28. Which is uh, uh, Patterson, the running back. We have a flag already on the play. As the play develops, it'll be a no yards call, but it won't be a 15 yarder because the ball hit the ground. And I think uh, uh, Trevor Kenner will be happy for his boys to give up that five yards, then to back up and have him pick it up and run uh, back for six. Be long, so guys. Ball has changed possession. We've got 544 to go here in the first quarter. Three nothing in favor of the Lightning team. Wearing blues, we get a look at Trevor Kenner, one of the top 10 scorers in CFL history. And the all-time leading scorer on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers for the moment as 
Troy Westwood is only 33 points behind him and should surpass him in a couple of weeks into the CFL season. But Trevor, a great career, without a doubt, for the Winnipeg Football Club. And also, he's the one that initiated the senior ball, the Subway senior ball. It was his, uh, his, his brand trust that did it, and uh, we're very uh, thankful to him that uh, he had that insight, and uh, here we are. Third year. Always had a passion for football and especially high school football. Coach Brian Doby for many years at Churchill. Helped him out as well, I believe, uh, at the U of M for a couple of seasons. So definitely a passion for the game and helping uh, youngsters develop into fine athletes and fine people. As the play goes on, quarterback tries to elude the pressure. He does. However, he might still get sacked as the play finally comes to its conclusion. Good pressure on the part of Team Lightning. There, there was a lot of bar. They did a good job of keeping him inside and didn't let him get outside to the sidelines and roll, forcing him back in. Uh, somebody, I, I can't see the number that missed the sack. That could be him laying down on the ground there, but uh, slowed it up enough that uh, they, they got the pressure in the sack. When you, you limit yourself when you roll out uh, to the short side of the field especially, but you limit yourself when you roll out, period, because now you only got two receivers involved instead of all four of them. Injured player on the field, it's hard for us to see who it is, but we do see Jen Romanoff, the head trainer getting involved here. Of course, the head trainer of the University of Manitoba Bisons and an assistant with the Blue Bombers for a couple of seasons. She's out there tending to the player. And while we've got this uh, brief break here, uh, Ron, again, let's talk about uh, the officials and uh, the fact that they're getting a chance to uh, to train and try different things here. Well, the, all these guys have worked, uh, you know, they'd work all the amateur football games, and especially we're very pleased with our partnership and our relationship with the officials, and they, they enjoy doing our games, and we enjoy having them. But this game here gives them an opportunity to break some officials in at some different positions. Some of these guys may have just been linesmen or line judges last year. Now they're going to get a chance to back judge. Uh, some of the guys that have been around a little while longer may be getting a chance to go a referee for a quarter or so. So it, it's a kind of an honor for them at this time to come out and work these games and an opportunity to them to expand upon their skills as an official. Okay, let's go down to the sidelines where Darcy Taves is standing by. Darcy? Thanks. Uh Talking to uh, the coaches earlier in the week, Paul Bennett and Frank Robinson of both teams, uh, they're both using the same offensive and defensive playbooks. For, so today's game isn't really going to be decided on the, the razzle-dazzle and the fancy plays. It's all about execution and performance. And right now, as it stands, uh, Team Thunder is just coming out a lot more energized. Back to you, Sean. Thank you very much, Darcy. It looks like it was Matthew Fox, the injured defensive lineman, leaving the field now for Team Lightning. And... Uh, He's getting some help as he makes his way to the sidelines here. Hopefully he's okay. Yeah, this is something we don't like to, you know, I, we know it's part of the game, the injuries occur, but uh, you know, when you're in an all-star game and what could be your last high school game, it, uh, it's a sad thing to see someone getting injured. Hopefully it's just a little bit of strain, maybe a cramp. It looks like he's holding that uh, foot up. Maybe he's got a cramp in his calf, and we hope the best for Matthew there as he comes off. They'll get him doctored up, and out he goes again. They'll get him stretched out and get him uh, rehydrated here. So we've got 5-12 and counting to go here in the first quarter. Ryan called us under center here for Team Thunder. Play action, pass out to the left side. On the hands on, on top of the helmet of number 75, Matt Harding. And uh, a heads up play, but he didn't quite pull it off. I think he ran for about two yards with the ball bouncing off his head. You get, Matt Harding is our uh, Harry Hood winner last year, mm. the, the top high school football player based on academics, community service, and football playing ability. And in talking with Coach Urbanovich at Churchill, he, he's very pleased with that. He was a two-way player, played middle linebacker and fullback for them. He's playing fullback today. And my understanding, he's going to Mount Allison next fall mm. to play. So uh, he's, he's got some ac academic skills and some football skills also. Heading out to the East Coast, the Mount Allison uh, Mounties, I believe they're called. Uh, part of that great athletic uh, conference out in the Atlantic as we get a look at Matthew Fox getting tended to on the sidelines. Third down, punting formation here for Team Thunder. A low line drive kick against the wind, pretty decent. Taken on the fly by number 34, Adam Douglas, it looks like, who, uh, or sorry, the, the other side, number 34, Richard Sylvester, who pulled that down. Uh, a little, I think a little miscommunication that you know, there, there was a little bit between Lovett and Sylvester. They were both going for the ball. Fortunate uh, with the catch that he didn't fumble. That would have been a big turnover for uh, for team. And and from this ang and from this angle, you really can't tell because that ball could have swirled from one guy to the other mm -hmm. guy, and then that could have caused the confusion as well. Getting a look at the action on the sidelines here as the trainers are working on Matthew Fox. It looks like it is a cramp, guys, because they are stretching him out. Hopefully, it's nothing more serious, but. Uh, you can see he's grimacing a little bit right now. Team Lightning under center. Lorenz remains in at quarterback. 
Backs pushing up to the line of scrimmage. Hot pattern down the, hot pass I should say, down the field intended for number seven, James Fulcher, just a little bit ahead of him, incomplete. Nice little three-step drop, trying to hit that seam route going up between just a little bit to overthrow. Uh, coverage looked pretty good though too, that's been pretty good. If that was caught, it was gonna be a pretty good collision right away. Teams use that little play right there as it's just as good as a run on a first down. If they can pick up five, they're happy with it. Also changes the tempo of a passing situation, keeps the defense honest. Or this is definitely a passing situation here at second and 10. Lorenz rolls out to his right, gets some good blocking in front of him. Goes downfield, a little too far this time, intended for Lovett. Same play we saw earlier, strong arm on Lawrence. But I tell you what, the defensive backs, I guess Dave Donaldson got them straight on the sideline. They were all over that six route that time. He was double covered on that. Yeah, they were two covered, but Bolly Battelle and uh, Ed Panting from Sister. To, so maybe they're used to working together in that defensive secondary. But ball a little overthrown, but uh, it was going to be interesting if it would have been caught anyhow. Great coverage. Dave Donaldson high-fiving those two players as they left the field. He's pumped up. As you get a look at the Team Thunder bench here. They're wearing white, of course, getting ready to go on offense. Hopefully after this punting situation. Looks like Hucklack is back again to do the honors. Four team lightning, a bit of a high snap last time. This time it's perfect. He lines it up and puts foot to leather and he wow. hooks it down the field. Wow. And if he gets a bounce, which he does. Wow. Huge play here as the ball goes down the field. And the Tavish has some speed. If he can get to the outside, he'll be dangerous, but they turn him back in. He's still breaking tackles. Oh. Flag on the play. A bad, that was a bad penalty to take. I and mean, your, your returner has worked his tail off to get the ball back into good playing position. And then you take a legal hit in the back. They're probably going to take it back inside the, uh, the, inside the 20. Unofficially a 68-yard punt after the bounce. And a nice return by McTavish. Picked the ball up, dodged uh, one tackler, and broke a couple more. And uh, well, he was one player away from breaking it, uh, which would have been frustrating on his behalf as a return man to have him come back on a penalty. Legal use of hands, I believe, will be the call. White number block. 10, it'll be a first down. So that'll move it back, but uh, good effort on both sides on that play other than the penalty, which will result in a first down and 10 at the 13-yard line for Team Thunder. 3.16 to go here, or 3.18, I should say, in the first quarter. You know, we're seeing some really good football, some really ind good individual play out of these kids. Uh, Huck Luck had the, the high snap the first time. He pulled it down and had a good kick. This time, he just had an awesome boot out of that. So, Team Thunder pinned back deep in their end of the field against the wind. Quick little pass this time to the outside to number 80, Jason Quick. And he quickly got the ball and turned it upfield for a gain of about eight or nine. That's a good throw, good throw and catch. And that's a, a, a great pickup. Uh, now it leaves you second and short. And Jason Quick had an excellent uh, year last year in his last year for uh, St. John's. Uh, he was an excellent receiver, and, and he was also their punter, so he, he did a lot of things for him. Joe Poplowski, one of the assistant coaches here. Run it up the middle. Another Canadian Football Hall of Famer. They're all over the place, in the booth and on the field, and maybe some future players on the field taking part in this game. Second you never and know. A, you never know. they got to start somewhere. Second and one. Second back gets oh. the call, but he gets hammered. Great defense on the part of Team Lightning's number 23, Corey Hucklack, shot the gap and took him down. Okay, Les, I've got a question there. You know, we're looking that left guard and left tackle for that team. It goes close to probably 600 pounds, and they're at second and two, and they're, they're running right side. So. I, I, don't, I don't understand the play call in that situation, but two times in a row, that defense has stood up on, on second and short and made this team have to punt the ball. Yes. That, is, that is great uh, turn of field position as well. Look where they're going to be receiving the ball at now. You would think with the talent that they've got at, and at this level, you go with your strengths and, until they can stop you. Well, especially, you know, you look at the clock now, there's 2.20 left in the first quarter. Right, that would have been a time deep in your end zone to get behind the big boys, run it out, take time off the clock. Uh, if you, worst case scenario, you end up punting on third down with the win. Take, run that quarter out. So instead, it will be a, a punting situation here, deep in the end of the field here. I believe McTavish to do it again, another low liner. Take it, I love it. Good job being done oh. by special teams. Ball's fumbled, but was he ruled down first? He, he shouldn't have been. It was a nice play on number five. I think that was uh, Paul Begrass from Churchill. We saw him punch the ball out. It came up. Uh, I thought it was free less. That's a, that's a hell of a play by uh, 
like you said, number five, he did a heck of a job because while the guy was still fighting for yardage, he hasn't went down yet, still fighting for yardage, they punch it out. And we didn't hear the whistle until after the ball was loose, so it wasn't like they blew it dead. That should be a fumble. Rory Hughes is clapping. Now the good thing is the officials are conferring. Let's let's hear the official here as he makes the call. There it is. Yes, indeed. Great call. They conferred and made the right call. The fumble indeed was caused before the whistle. White ball. There's an inadvertent done. whistle on the play. Some of the clips. listen, guys. I'll tell you. Inadvertent whistle. White already had the ball. That's what the ruling is. There you go. Good explanation of what happened. And you know he's in control when he says, listen, guys, and explains it to the coaches. So uh, no doubt there. And again, perfect example of how the officials get some good training and they get some live action to hone their skills. Now the drive continues. First and 10. Team Thunder with the ball. Quarterback change. Paul Teets is now in. He throws the ball deep downfield. He's got a receiver, but it's batted around. Is it intercepted? No, the ball hits the turf. And that's a case where the wind held that up, guys, because he had a receiver and the ball was on the money. It just took a while to get there. And that's why you cannot run deep routes when you have a windy day out there. You have to play possession football until the wind is in your favor. Yeah, McDavish, he was open by about five yards. I thought that was six. That safety came over and did a heck of a job and almost had a pick. Uh, lost it around. Uh, good, good defensive play. I'm still, I'm still wondering why they're not using the big boys up front. You know? Some of those defensive linemen won't see the sun the rest of the day playing across from the wing and plant. They're, they're, they're rolling away and throwing. Second and 10, Team Thunder with the ball at their own 48 yard line. Quick drop, Teets with a pass, completes it, but great coverage by the defender. That should have been their first down play right there. Then they would have been left at second and five, and they could have ran it again, picked up the first down, moved the chains. There's a minute and two left on the clock. By the time they got down there, they would have had a chance for a field goal with the win at their back. Yeah, nice, nice throw again. The pick up a five, though. You're right, Les. That could have been a first guard down play. But Jason Quick makes another nice catch and good defensive play by, the wide by number 21 field. to make so a hit immediately. So that was from Mike Melillo. Okay. Luke Kennard has the man. Good pattern, Luke. Yeah, yeah. So let's just let's look to the post a little bit. Let's start with the quarter wide receivers a little bit here. Okay? You can run the 70 28, and you can look at the wide receiver, and if he's not open, then you throw the out, okay? But let's think about throwing so the ball. Joe field. We're going to have some wind in the quarter. Giving some instruction, some things we were just talking about, and what to look for on that first down play what to see before you choose that deep out. But see, this, there, there goes, that's a good football player. Joe Pop is also being a, 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 a spectator as well. He's seeing that the ball is being thrown majority on the numbers or outside the numbers. And he's telling them, okay, now let's try to go on the post a little bit. Let's look for the post because they're playing for the outs. Timeout had been called there by Team Lightning to stop the clock and take full advantage of uh, uh, the time that they have with the wind here in the first quarter. Third and about five. Hunting situation again for Team Thunder. A good low liner, and it'll take a bounce too and head downfield. Taken at the five. Sylvester tries to make it upfield. He gets taken down exactly at the five. Nice play by Kevin Brick from Tech Block. He kept outside pressure and outside leverage. When Sylvester cut back inside, he got off the block and made the tackle. Now they're even. They're even, I say that because it's a cardinal sin for a returner to let the ball bounce, get over his head to bounce for that yardage anyway. Now both teams have done it, so they're even. And I'm pretty sure both coaches are gonna let them know about it. But I think that was an excellent kick by McTavish too. He's done a good job kicking in the wind, nice line drives, and that one uh, over the head again, and uh, we're back inside the five starting out. Certainly both returners cheated a little bit. They moved up about five yards thinking he wasn't gonna boot it that far in the wind. And, uh, as we go to action now, first and 10 at the five. There it is. And Les, you were just signaling that to me up in the booth, the uh, the crossing pattern, work the one receiver underneath and take the other guy out. That was intended for number three, Matt Wallace, even though it went incomplete. It was uh, certainly well executed, well thought out play. It's a wheel route that they have been working on all week long and they've been working to perfection for them in practice. And that one almost worked for perfection to him too. It went right off his fingertips. Second and ten, just 20 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Well, be, if, this, if they're stopped here, Les, it might be timeout. Might be timeout time for Team White. Oh, maybe not. Maybe they don't want them kicking with the wind. Oh, oh nice cut by Massey. Of course, you're going to have to stop him to make him punt, and that's a great run 
on the part of uh, Thomas Massey, as you mentioned. So we get a look at Frank Robinson. Uh, last year was Massey's first year of football at St. Paul's. He's been a member of their provincial wrestling championship team, and uh, with obviously Coach Watson doing the wrestling, he got him off for football, and uh, he's got some pretty good skills for someone that's only been playing for a short time. So first and ten, this will be the final play of the quarter, barring penalty. 3 nothing lead right now for Team Lightning. They have the ball at their own 16-yard line. Lawrence again, the quarterback. Two receivers to the top, two to the bottom. Everybody's in motion, balls passed ahead, oh, hits the hands, but is dropped. That's a great defensive play by the corner. He broke on that ball just like he was taught. I heard Dave Donaldson tell him in practice, when the ball's in the air, you are no longer a defensive back, you're the receiver. And he went and knocked that ball down just perfect. And that's Paul Biggers again. He's the one that punched out the ball on that turnover on the punt. So he's, uh, in the first quarter, he's made two big plays. So we get a look at the sidelines here as the two teams change in. Certainly uh, a very interesting quarter considering these uh, two teams are still getting adjusted to each other and fighting the elements here. But uh, guys, some of your thoughts on this 3-0 lead here by Team Lightning. Well, I see it as a chess game right now. You know, the coaches are, be, are, are trying to play this game as smart as they can, knowing that the win is, as, is a factor. And uh, basically, uh, field position, turnovers is going to major, be a major play in this game. All right, let's go down to the sidelines where Darcy Taves is standing by. Darcy? Uh, thanks. I talked to uh, Matthew Fox, who had that injury early, uh, late in the first quarter. Uh, he says he planted his foot, somebody uh, planted his leg, somebody came down on it. It's his knee, where the doctor was kind of playing with it, just doing some simple tests. He seemed to be in a lot of pain. They iced it down. They don't really know anything right now, but uh, they, they, he still hopes to come back a little bit later on. Right now, it's just iced down and testing. Thank you very much, Darcy, for that update. Uh, certainly a little more serious than what we had thought, guys. Uh, and we do hope that Matthew is okay. It's really tough with those knee injuries. You never know with swelling and everything what it's going to mean. So hopefully it's nothing too serious. You know, and you asked the question just before that play was run about that, that first quarter. I, mm. I look at a uh, quarter of big plays. You know, we had the big pass to Lovett. Uh, then we had the touchdown to Durham call back. So, I mean, the, I got to think Team Thunder is feeling pretty lucky at this point, down only three when it could have been ten. They're, they're putting with the wind uh, in their face now. I think it worked out for them, picking up the first down. <laughs> and yeah. now they're putting with the wind in their face. Well, Corey's chance to kick in. The, oh, almost. They came after him, and Hucklett takes the, the Greg Luganis dive. Didn't draw the flag, though, but great field position for Team Thunder here. And a nice job by Luke Kennard to, to catch that ball. It was dying in the wind. He came up and fielded it. Uh, didn't let the all the commotion of the people coming down to get him getting his head and got the ball and picked up five and he could have had a, a no yards call on that as well because there were people within the five but they got away with it in any case they start first and ten at the team lightning 36 yard line absolutely great field position here for team thunder they trail three nothing right now but they've got the wind at their backs and a full quarter to work with Backs empty to the backfield. Looks like it's a passing situation. Teets, pumps, throws. He's got a receiver. Can he get to the ball? No. Defender at his back to the play. Pass intended for Adam McTavish. He goes incomplete. Now you notice that both teams now with the win at their back decided to go deep right away. And Sukic from Maples, number 32 on the on Team Lightning, did a good job. Sitting on the inside hip of McTavish as he was going around. Uh, didn't get any interference call, screened him off, and didn't allow McTavish to get back to the ball, which was thrown back that, inside. That's what us DBs would call blanket coverage. <laughs> we say the quarterback can't see him if he's in the dark. Now some movement here by Team Thunder. Teets drops back, full seven-step drop. He goes downfield in between two of his receivers. Not sure who it was intended for, but uh, in any case, it does go incomplete, bringing up third down. Now, they had the ball with the wind at their back, and two plays did nothing with it to get in within field goal range. They still might try one from here with the wind as strong as it is. Luke Kennard is one of the kickers. I'm not sure. I don't see him on the field at the moment, but uh, son of Trevor Kennard, who we see on our screen right now. He's kicking. Adam. And they McTavish. are McTavish. They're oh, saying Adam McTavish. And McTavish is in. So uh, Luke Kennard, the son of the man we just saw yelling, he'll come out. McTavish will yeah. attempt. It looks like it's going to be about a 43, 42 yarder maybe, let's say. I think he's got the leg for it with this wind. See what he can do. Ball snap, flag on the play. Kicks a little wobbly and wide to the left, taken. 
about 12 yards deep, they'll concede the single point. However, before we put that up on the scoreboard, let's see what happens with these flags. Looks like it will go against Team Thunder. I see Frank Robinson saying no, decline that, we'll take the ball. They'll take it at the 35 instead of letting the punt and hem them deep. Yep. So, score is cut, or lead is cut to two at 3-1. Just over two there? minutes in. Okay, 20 dive. Okay. In the second quarter here, Dan Huckleck talking to his troops. White, decline, one point scored, first down. Oh, we'll see if their offensive philosophy changes a little bit in the second quarter. They, they seem to air it out a lot in that first half with the wind. We'll see if they get a little more conservative and try to pound away in the middle. And take some time off the clock and get some establish some field position out of this. Deepak Sharma from Naples, the Naples Marauder player in at quarterback. He's wearing number one. Two backs in the backfield. Give us to the second back. Correction, the first back. I got faked out again here. That was a good fake, but they always tell the running back who is not getting the ball to act like he is getting the ball so that it will draw some attention. It draws some attention from up here in the booth from me and you, Sean. It also draws some attention from those players on the field, too, because he went through that hole like he had the ball. Team Lightning with the 3-1 lead. You're right, Les. Uh, uh, like, like he was heading to the house with the rock. and. Uh, <laughs> Certainly a strong run, sold the fake well. Second and about six. Team Lightning with the ball in the 3-1 lead, as mentioned, deep pitch. Oh, just read very well. Read very well. Kevin Brick from Tech Block. Excellent, excellent play. Good job, came up, tackle for, uh, what, about a five yard loss on that play. Pins him deep, forces him to kick. As you mentioned, great read and, and strong pursuit. Third and 11 now, and again, hunting against the wind. Not uh, the ideal situation here for Team Lightning as Corey Hucklack is back deep, looking to kick the ball. And now, Trevor Kennard has adjusted. He has put one up shorter mm -hmm. and one deeper. And when you have a windy situation, you have to do that because you never know which way that ball is going to come off his foot. He made a switch in one of the return men, too. He's got uh, Luke Kennard back there instead of McTavish now with Patterson. Great kick against the wind. Patterson takes it at his 39 and heads upfield. He's got a seam. He kicks oh, it to the outside. Gone. He crosses center over the 50. Huckluck's got the last the 40. He's got one man to beat. Huckluck holds him up and lets his teammates come back to bring him down. Otherwise, that was six. That was definitely going to be six. Good thing the kicker is an athlete. <laughs> yes. But did, uh, Patterson did a nice job. The ball into the wind. It flutters a little bit coming down. He caught the ball with his hands. Got, got it settled, looked wrong, cut left, and then made a cut back up right, picked up a couple good blocks That's exactly and took it to true. the sideline. What impressed me about this little kid is that he can move laterally and still see the hole to be able to cut up field and make some yardage, make something happen out of it. Now, guys, again, great field position. Last time the drive started at the 36, this time at the 32. They only came away with a point last time. Let's see what they do with the offense. The best DBs on the field. Quarterback rolls out to his right, fakes, pulls it down, heads up field. Caldis slides in after a gain of about six or seven. No, he has played that very smart, very smart. Nothing was open. Why wait? Why take a chance on getting it picked off? Pulled it down, went up field, picked up about, what, six yards? About six yards, and uh, Guy Page made a nice block for him downfield alignment. When, he, when the quarterback pulled it down, he got downfield and, and gave him a block that allowed him to pick up about three more yards. Okay, so second and four, the situation here. For Team Thunder, they're wearing white, moving left to right on your television screen. There's Ryan Caldas, the quarterback, under center. Again, looks downfield. He's got a receiver open in the middle of the field. <laughs> Pass is complete and taken down inside the 10. Mike Malillo from Calvin, they just ran that little seam route from the slot. Nice throw, uh, had a nice passing lane, and, and there he was. Nice throw from Caldas from River East. He, he just sat back in there. He looked right, turned back left. There was a wide lane, and he just right on the numbers. Well, that's what's really impressing is that he had to poise to sit in that pocket, look to one side, and back to the other side to find an opening. First and goal, Team Thunder at the nine-yard line. Caldas again under center, backs in the eye, and they go in motion. Second back through, oh. but nothing there. Hucklack shot the gap again and brought him down, tackle for a loss. For the third time in a row, this defense has stepped up and made a play when they needed to make a play. And I, I think the fullback missed uh, Corey on that, uh, as they run that lead. If he could have picked him up, but no, he, he came through the gap and uh, tackled for a three yard loss. And now they're looking at second and uh, 13. 
at the, I guess it's second and goal from the 13. And it's probably going to be in the air. Backs in the backfield, but again, as you mentioned, looks like the passing situation is. Caldas drills one into Touchdown. the end zone. Touchdown, what a Team Thunder. What a catch. Nice adjustment. If you saw him, he make that nice adjustment to the ball less. Ball was inside. He spun himself around and got outside, made a catch over the shoulder deep in the corner. Nice job by Luke Cannon. You know, I've seen Doug, I've seen uh, Darren Flutie do that many a times with Danny McManus throwing the ball to him. This young kid, Luke Kennard had the poise enough to sit and look from one side to the other side and catch it over his shoulder with traffic all around him. In double coverage, Luke Kennard comes down with the ball, officially a 13-yard touchdown. There you see Trevor Kennard, the proud father and coach here. Where to go, you guys? And now the convert attempt with four, sorry, 9.30 to go here in the second quarter. 7-3 the score. Four-team Thunder trying to add to their lead. Yeah, giving Luke a chance to convert his own touchdown. So there's a nice touch by Trevor. Something you don't see much of anymore is a player converting their own touchdown. Hasn't happened with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers since Troy Westwood in 1993. So that tells you how far back it goes. Well, the, the defense stepped up, stepped up, stepped up, and finally they broke a little bit. And uh, nice throw by Coldest to, to Kenner for the touchdown. But uh, I think it was important for, for Team Thunder to get some points on that. They've been down inside the 35 a couple times and came away with no points. And that makes it interesting now. Seven or an 8-3 ball game, and here we go. And it's just a great job to, for them to just keep fighting and keep fighting until something happened for them. But like you say, what a heck of a pass and a heck of a catch by uh, Luke Kenner. It was really neat watching Trevor, as his son made that catch, that he didn't ever change his look from a coaching to father. Mm. <laughs> it stayed into the coaching aspect. I imagine after the game, he'll walk up to him and say, hey, that was a hell of a catch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess I guess Luke won't be saying hi, Mom. God, assume Mom's here and Dad's on the sideline, so he's pretty <laughs> happy with himself there. And rightfully so, it was a great play. Adam McTavish to kick off here for Team Thunder. We have 9:30 to go here in the second quarter. Kick and over in, taken at the 10. It's Lovett with the ball and a seam works it upfield, gets plowed at the 26, where it'll be first and 10 for Team Lightning. Nice tackle by Domino again. Good job. Good tackle. I thought Lovett had a little bit of seam there, and uh, he tried cutting back off the sidelines, but Domino was there to stop his uh, forward progress and tee it up from, what, the 20, 27, 28-yard line. Get a look at Luke Kennard, the hero of the moment. That last touchdown. Great job to catch it in double coverage in the deep corner of the end zone. Now, we'll see how Team Lightning responds here. Backs are split, two receivers to either side. Hand off, running to the left. Team Lightning picking up about two or three. Sharma remains in a quarterback. I think that was Tom Massey again from, from St. Paul's carrying the football. A little counter trail. It seemed like they pulled both backside linemen and picked up, uh, I guess, two yards on the play. Hard fought two, second and eight now for Team Lightning. It's really funny to see how the momentum can switch in this game, just like that. From one big play, now it looks like the momentum is definitely on the Thunder side. Team Lightning facing second and eight at their own 30. Sharma in at quarterback. Fakes the handoff, tries to roll out. He's got pressure, gets it off. And the pass is complete and good for a first down as number 34, Richard Sylvester, heads upfield for a pickup of about 16 or 17. That was one heck of a catch because his quarterback was under pressure. Uh, like I said before, they had been doing a heck of a job with contain, and they did a good job with contain that time, too. And also putting the, the quarterback on his hind end. But still, he got the ball off, and the, the receiver made a catch and uh, did well after the catch. You're right, Les. Uh, Sharma had uh, Dave Larson from Churchill in his face and paid the price after getting rid of the ball, but it was right there on the money. Richard made a nice catch and turned it into a big play for a first down. Make it officially a gain of 18, first and 10 at the 48 for Team Lightning. Hand off to Sylvester, who runs the ball, doesn't get much. And we have a late flag. It looks like this might be unnecessary roughness against Team Thunder. After a very good play, too. Nice play by Andrew Orris from Kelvin to, to stop that up for no gain. A couple of shots taken after the play had concluded, so that's likely what the call will be. We'll wait for the official signal. Second down. Flag thrown in air, and uh, so we get a look at Team Lightning's number 36, Michael Lunt from Oak Park. 
getting pretty physical out there. He's uh, got to look, to, whether it's a bloody nose or what, but uh, they've got the guys on there and look to put some ice on it. So uh, he'll be back. You know, uh, players love to play this game and have a little bit of blood on them. Either it be their own or somebody else's. It just signifies the toughness of the game. And badge, they love it. Badge of honor, certainly. Right now, second and ten, Sharma rolls to his left. Under pressure, tries the lead pass ahead, but it's incomplete. That'll bring up third down. Nice job by Massey on that one as they rolled out. He picked up the blitzing linebacker, and that was... Uh, John Domino coming from the inside, number 38, and uh, allowed uh, his quarterback to get the throw off. The Thunder team, once again, is doing a heck of a job in containing and not allowing that quarterback to get outside the pocket and be able to take his time, square up, and throw the ball on time. So again, we've got our new, uh, new return man back there for uh, Team Thunder. They've got Molly Battel from Sisler with Luke Kennard, so they've, they've alternated a few people back there. Just shows you the amount of talent on these teams. They can pick and choose people they want to put back there and they'll all do a good job. Again, they split the returners high and low. Hucklack again to do Coming the honors. He pulls oh. it down and he elects to kick it anyways. It's a wobbler. It's going towards the sidelines and out of bounds. It looks like they'll mark it somewhere around the 38, maybe 40 yard line. And they walk it up even further to the 43. So inadvertent snap. Hucklick did what he could to get the kickoff, but certainly wasn't as good as what Team Lightning had hoped for. Well, I looked at that, and I thought, he's going to run the fake because he had lots of room on the sidelines. But one of the agreements between the coaching staff is there would be no fake punts and no trick plays on that. So Well, you could see that they lined up with two people on the outside uh, guys on the punt team. One of them snuck in at the last minute and rushed the punter. So they had a block on, and it was going to be blocked if he decided to kick it. He did a heck of a job of pulling it down and even getting it off. It's hard to tell a kid not to run the fake when he's got that much yardage in front of him. Caldas, drop. Oh, he's got a receiver. Can he get it to him? No, just out of the extended hands of the receiver. Not sure if that was number 81 McTavish or not, but uh, he had him there certainly. So they've seen something in the defense. They've gone after one of the corners here. They've done, uh, done an excellent job of protecting their quarterbacks on that. There, there hasn't been any pressure when he sat in that pocket. They're just forcing everything out, and they're getting good looks at who they're throwing to. But the thing is, he's sitting in the pocket. The pocket is collapsing around him, and he still has the poise to sit in there and look to, for that pass, which is a good job. Second and 10, called the center center, backs in the eye. Two receivers, both sides. Oh, great job on the defensive pressure there. Number 27, Mike Wallback coming in with the sack. Tried to get a little fancy there, run a boot. And, uh, they sat well on the backside and made the tackle, and they'll be kicking it up again. Again, less this team uh, making some plays when they have to on defense. Kudos to the defense again. Uh, they uh, they understand what they're supposed to be doing out there. They're only supposed to be stopping the offense and getting the ball back so their offense can do something with it. And they've been doing it all day long, except for one play, which was a touchdown. Dan uh, Hucklick looking on. Team Thunder to punt here. And it's almost blocked. Good job to get it away. Ball's taken by number 80, Durham. He advances it upfield to about the 47-yard line. Corey Huckluck came through there untouched. He ran by an offensive lineman, and he ran by the up back to get to the punter, and no one touched him. The gamesmanship begins. I guess the, the rules are out. They're, they're going for blocks. Next thing we'll be seeing fake kicks and <laughs> trick plays, and it's all over, okay? The game has started. I'll tell you, as, as a coach of special teams, when you see a play like that where a guy comes in unhindered, you've got to be going nuts because someone's got to pick that guy up coming through. Right now, first and 10 at the 47-yard line for Team Lightning. Once again, it's Sharma under center. He hands the ball off. Good run there by, I believe it's Massey again. Yes, it is. I believe that's the first time we saw uh, either team go into a different formation. They showed up in the trips formation that time with one receiver back week. Yeah, it's been pretty much the standard offense other than that. There has well, been some motion, but not a whole lot. Both, both coaching staffs agreed to use the same base offense and base defense, so that's why they're, they're feeling each other out. We're starting to see a few changes to it now. And off to Massey again. Oh, he's got a hole. He's got first down and more, pushing it into the Thunder territory. 
at their 47 yard line. So a solid gain of about nine and a first down for Team Lightning. Get a look at the crowd here in attendance at Can Indian Stadium. Great day for football. People coming to check out this Subway Senior Bowl, the 2002 version of it, the third annual, if I'm not mistaken. And certainly a great spectacle for football in the province of Manitoba. First and 10. Massey gets the ball again, but he's mm. met by two huge Thunder players. Rory, Rory Hughes, Hughes from Sisler. He's made a couple big plays. I remember you know, early in the game, he made a huge play stuffing that up. That time he just took that offensive lineman, stuffed him up, and there was nowhere for Massey to go. And Second and ten. I tell you, every time they've come to Roy, Roy, Roy use, every time they've gone to his side, he's made the play. And there you see him on your screen, the sister Spartan, wearing the helmet proudly, Sutherland alongside him. Sharma drops, rolls out. He's got pressure, looking for a receiver. Oh. And the defender jumped the route. He almost had the pick, and if he could have hauled it down on the on the run, he was gone. Well, they've had success throwing that earlier in the game, and the secondary's picked up on it. And Bali Patel from Sisler, number 32, if he would have picked that one, it was six. Double D, Dave Donaldson on the sideline was jumping up and down, had his hat off, already celebrating that. <laughs> he had saw him break on the ball so clean. That was a very good job. There he is right there, Bali Patel, number 32 from Sisler. And he's one of the people back to return this punt from Corey Hucklack, Luke Kennard, the other person back. Both are about their 10 yard line as Patel now goes a little further back. High snap, Hucklack pulls it down and gives a huge kickoff to Kennard. He picks it up, he's got some blocking. He advances upfield, gets it out to about the 16 or 17 where he's brought down. And that's where Team Lightning will start first and 10 at their own 17. Good coverage by the team. Uh, Gord Saligan and uh, I guess it was Richard Sylvester. Both played at Oak Park, uh, pinned them up uh, about five yard gain, but uh, nice kick by Hawk Luck and uh, with 344 left, uh, we'll see if they can uh, put more points on the board. I, I still like to see them get behind the big boys and start pounding the ball away a little bit. We haven't seen that. I think we're a little bit surprised by that. They haven't really showcased them that much yet. With three minutes and 36 seconds left to go in the game, I got a feeling that you're going to see a three minute drill here. They need to get down the field and get something out of this before the half. Oh, Hucklack had a golden opportunity, yeah. but he set it up for his teammate. Number 42, that's Gord Selk, Selk, sorry, Selican coming in after Hucklack had set him up. Again, Hucklack just making a, a mockery of this offensive line the way he's getting into the backfield. The thing is that Huck Luck is being very smart. He knows that these guys have not changed their snap count probably and he is jumping the snap count like crazy. He is in the backfield before the ball even gets there. The quarterback's got to be wise to that or a coach has to help him out and say, hey, change it up a bit. Caldas still remains in at quarterback. 14 Thunder throws the ball downfield. No one there. And that goes incomplete. That'll bring up third down. Frank Robinson's got to be happy about that with his defense once again. They go in there and two and out, they're out of there, and they're going to have great field position. Was and as he boots a good one against this win, they're going to have great field position with 2.47 left on the clock. I was going to say, they're starting to turn the field on them now because it was so, so much of it was down inside their own 10 or 20. They pushed it back this way where they might get the ball around midfield. Paul Bennett talking to Caldas, reviewing the plays here. Obviously, a miscommunication somehow between quarterback and receiver. McTavish back at his own goal line, just inside actually by about a yard. Looking to punt the ball here for Team Thunder. Low snap, he picks it up and drives it. Taken by Matt Wallace, who starts his way across center, end up field, we have a flag. Might be an illegal block, we'll wait for the call. But I he think that's the ball what it was, Sean. I think they got him on a legal block and the push by on his first cut, but uh, well, let's go still, down to the still side. not bad side or field press or field, press, or field position. Unless the penalty is against them and then it takes them back across the, the center the center field line, uh, they it's a waste yep. <laughs> basically. Okay, while we've got this uh, uh, changeover of possession here, let's go down to the sidelines with Darcy Taves. Darcy. I'm with Dave Donaldson. Uh, Dave, so far the uh, Team Thunder is playing the way the Bombers do. It's defense, 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 and a lot of that's your doing. Oh, this is great. Um, this is a great D experience for these young guys to come out and play their last uh, high school uh, all-star game here. And I'm just happy to be. Uh, have, I'm, I'm just happy to be here and uh, have an opportunity to coach these guys. You're really getting into it. Should Dave Ritchie be uh, worried at all? Uh, 
you know, this is a good thing. You know, um, I'm glad I'm out here this early, right before training camp, because, you know, I want to get out there, put my pads on and play right now, too, with these guys. It's good. All right, well, I'll let you get back to worrying about defense. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Darcy. As we see Matt Wall, senior player, now leaving the field, uh, coming off under his own steam, he should be okay. And uh, Dave Donaldson referred to Dave Ritchie, who happens to be standing to my left, which is always a scary thought, having uh, the coach this close to me. But uh, uh, he's been enjoying the action here and uh, checking out some of maybe his future players. We'll, we'll see. We have almost our whole coaching staff is here at this game. A lot of the players are here at this game. Uh, these guys just can't wait to start the 2002 season. Paul LaPolice uh, among them, our offensive coordinator. He's in the crowd just below us here. Some of the players too, Lamar McGriggs in attempts as we see this pass going down oh. the field and dropped. An unfortunate situation there for Team Lightning as that was a, a solid pass downfield for number 87, Carlo Bruno, but he just couldn't quite bring it in. Uh, I'm sure he'll tell you he should have caught that one. Nice throw by Lawrence, dropped it right into him. Should have been six. I know he'll be thinking about that one. And the good coach will go back to him now. Even he'll throw something to him again. He'll go back to him again just to have him catch it. Good coaches and good quarterbacks. You've got to have faith in your personnel. Second and ten. At the Team Thunder 52. Quarterback drops back, throws to the left side this time, intended for number seven, James Fulcher, just a bit too long, and it goes incomplete. I have to tell you, uh, Tyler Schultz was uh, D-ing up uh, number 80 that time, and he's the one who made this play because he jammed him at the line of scrimmage and wouldn't let him off the line of scrimmage, disrupted the, the timing of the receiver and the quarterback, play done. Dave Donaldson all week long was talking about that. He had those guys looking at the waist belt, you know, and uh, jamming receivers all week for the four, four days they got a chance to practice. It's showing. Get a look at number 67, Lindsey Stevens on the sidelines as he watches this punt attempt here. Huck -lack. Low knuckleball kick is touched and then picked up by Team Thunder. And Kennedy touched it initially and then uh, Dolly Vitale from Sisler picked it up. Heads up play by him. That would have been a big turnover down inside the 20 yard line. That's one of the things, even if you're not the guy taking the ball, you got to keep your head in the play because it might come to you. There's Bally right there as he comes off the sideline. Good, again, good heads up play for Trevor, or Trevor. Luke tried to pick it up and uh, fumbled it, and Patel made the nice play. The reason why they have two returners is because of, the, of that exact reason. He's to look after, the, to see if that guy catches it. If he doesn't, he's the center fielder who backs him up. Backs in the eye here for Team Thunder. They start at their own. Eight, sorry, 19 yard line. Ball given to number 34, Adam Douglas. He works his way across the 20 and out to about the 22 for a pick up of three. Get a look at number 34 there, the ball carrier, Adam Douglas, and his teammates. With 152 remaining in the first half, we'll see how much they uh, can advance the ball down field here Les you mentioned earlier he thought they'd go into that three minute offense and try and hurry things up a bit but uh, but it now, seems like they're content to take their time now they're starting to running the ball I got a feeling that because they're in the lead that they're trying to run the clock out so that they can uh, so Thunder or uh, Lightning can't get a chance to get the ball back they're going, but they're going to right here pass over top and then hands of Jason quick and complete and you are right, it will bring up third down in a punting situation here for Team Thunder. 126 remaining in the first half. 8-3 the score, Thunder leading it over Lightning. As the big man, number 69, comes off the field. Lauren Plant, just a huge specimen. 6-5, and I know he goes over three bills. I don't know what the final tally is, but it's over that. And it, 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 talking with Brian Doby and, and uh, watching him play the last few years, he's got excellent feet for somebody that size. He's very athletic. Well, you know, I just saw him sit on the end of the bench, and he should never do that being that big because no one else <laughs> was sitting on the end of the bench. That would have just flipped the whole thing right up and right on him. He'd have been injured not being able to play the rest of the game. <laughs> the principles of the seesaw coming into, into the football game here is this kick is taken at midfield. Got room. He's got room. Durham's got room. Durham up, going up the seam. There's a late flag. Tackled by 50. I think that's Andrew Orris, is it? Number 55. Yep, from Kelvin. Made a nice play on that. But we're 
depending on who that flag's against, if it's against I uh, Team Thunder, they're an excellent <laughs> field position. You know, they would have excellent field position, but this call is going to go against Corey Huckluck for throwing a good block. He threw a perfectly good block, and they called a, a flag on him, and now it's going to go against him. So a legal block called on the return. Paul Bennett looking on. Ball's pushed back to the 50-yard line. Blue number 27, first down. That penalty go against Mike Wallbank. So the first and 10 at the Lightning 50-yard line. We have one 14 remaining here in the first half. And once again, Merrick Lawrence under center. There you go, Parker. He drops back, looks up field. There goes the wheel route. Goes through the hands of number 80, Curtis Durham. It looked like he might have been out of bounds anyways, even if he had brought it down. But there we go again. We're talking about the wind playing a factor. As soon as he put the ball up in the air, it just started to sail out, out, of, the, out of bounds right away. Never had a chance for it. Brings up a second and 10. 109 remaining in the first half. Hey, Chris! Watch out, watch out, Chris! Backs are split. Good The give is to the first back. Number nine, Mike Force, pushes it upfield for about a gain of eight. Looks like another punting situation. I didn't know if they were kind of. I guess it's a little bit long. Third and two and a half. A little bit long to go for it this time in the game. Turn the ball over at midfield gives them an opportunity to get points. So they're going to kick it away. I thought about it for a second there, though. It, and I got a feeling Frank knows that if uh, his defense keeps playing as good as they are, they might get a chance to get the ball back again if they pin them deep down there. So Hocklack back to punt. Kennard and Patel, I believe, again back there to receive. Ball snapped to Hocklack, pulls it down and unloads. Sidewinder punt, it's gonna hit the ground. And it's taken by Kennard at the 19. Reverses his field. Oh, he's got room. He's got a lot of room. And blockers as he tries to work up the left side. Slows it up, trying to let the play develop. And he's brought down about the 33 or 34 yard line. Good job by Kennard to take it across field. He saw something there, had some blockers. Didn't quite develop the way he wanted, but at least he made some yardage out of it. And there, uh, Carlo Bruno. We talked about him a few plays ago at that drop ball. Did a nice job to keep outside contained and slowed him up. When we first got the, you know, just around that half, we thought he had the corner and looked like a big game, but Bruno did a good job of keeping leverage on him and forced him back and made the play. Luke Kennard coming off the field. The owner of the only touchdown of this game so far, his team leading at 8-3. 32 seconds remaining here in the first half. Team Thunder with the ball. Hand off. Adam Douglas, I believe. That is the first time I saw Team Thunder in a trips formation. And uh, Team Lightning didn't adjust very well with it. If I was one of the coaches on the sideline, I'd have to take a look at that and maybe come back to it with a pass play. And yeah, they ran out of that formation that time, but uh, you're right, Les, if you see that, you've got to go after it because there's going to be a guy either one-on-one -on -one somewhere to the, the wide side of the field. Or somebody wide open. Backs in the eye. Standard set. Pass out into the flat here, where it's caught by Douglas, but he falls to the ground, and that'll bring up third down again. And there you have the gun to mark the end of the first half. The score, Team Thunder eight, Team Lightning three after two quarters of play. We'll take a short break, but when we come back, our halftime report. You're watching the 2002 Subway Senior Bowl on Shaw TV.
Hey, <laughs> good flick, huh? <laughs> I've seen this one five times. That guy that turns out he's the one poisoning everybody. Later on, he gets it from a monkey bite. <laughs> hey, where you going? Why not bring the action home? With Shaw's pay-per-view, you can order the movies you want from the comfort of your home. And you're always guaranteed the best seats in the house. Call Shaw to find out more or visit shaw.ca. Hey, you're gonna miss the monkey. One by one, they all went down. And now it's down to this. Lewis Tyson is on pay-per-view. This exclusive event is available only on Shaw Digital. Don't miss out. Get digital today. Where will you be when history goes down? So if I choose Shaw Digital's total home package, how much entertainment do I actually get? A lot. Full cable service? You got it. Internet access? You're always connected. 40 channels of commercial-free music? Exactly. Plus access to Shaw's pay-per-view movies, concerts, and sporting events? The works. And Movie Central, where there's uninterrupted movies? 24 hours a day. And it's all for one low monthly price? That's great. That is a lot of entertainment. Working with Christy is a really, really uh, a great experience. She's a really amazing director, and I feel very lucky to have been in her first film. It was just great. I mean, she, she communicates in a really interesting way. You're doing a bad job. Do it right. I will. You're ruining my whole movie. Ugh. It's, it's about trust. It's all about trust. I trust her. Today, she trusts me. Why your problem? She will guide you. Order this digital channel today. Welcome to Tech TV, the ultimate resource for technology news, information, and entertainment. On air, online. Tech TV is the network that provides you with the right tools for the right times. Tech TV, television about technology. Enjoy this digital channel today. Remember all that stuff we heard about satellite TV? You know, hundreds of channels, better than cable. Turns out most satellite systems can't even get local channels. And if you need additional outlets, you might have to buy a separate receiver for each set. Service and installation, that's your responsibility. With a digital cable, you'll get over 200 channels, interactive features, and local customer service that's guaranteed. So if you're thinking about satellite TV, you might want to think twice. Just seconds away from second half action here in the 2002 Subway Senior Bowl. There's the score on your screen. Team Thunder leading it 8-3 over Team Lightning. And Ron Gustafson and Les Brown, some of your thoughts on the first half. I think you know, Les and I were at practice on Friday night and, and talking with the coaching staff. I think uh, that uh, Team Lightning was a little concerned over Team Thunder size. And uh, we haven't seen that to be a factor at this point. I thought that with the, the big guys they have on that offensive line from Team Thunder that they'd start pounding the ball away, but they haven't done that. But uh, it's been a, it's been exciting, exciting. There's a lot of enthusiasm shown by the kids, and uh, I, I look forward to the second half. You know, Ron, it's been actually the other way around. The quickness has outbeat the big, the, the big guys, you know, and uh, they've been playing really good defense on the other side. And you know they say defense wins big games. So obviously if they keep playing defense like this, they'll be in it to the end. But it's, uh, the pressure is on uh, Frank Robinson and his uh, team Lightning crew right now because they have to get something, some kind of score in the third quarter because the fourth quarter, their backs are against the win. Yeah, well, that's uh, we talked about on the opening about the decision who won the cost and what's going to happen and who's going to have that win on the fourth quarter. And all the scoring we've seen has been with the win. So we'll see if that, uh, that remains to be a scenario for the second half. And everybody seems to think that, well, you get 15 minutes in the third and they get 15 minutes in the fourth and it's the same. But it isn't. You get more plays in the fourth quarter because of the timing rules. There's more stoppages. So you actually get more opportunities to do something with the wind. It makes a huge difference. So winning that coin toss and deferring it to the second half was a good choice by Team Thunder. So as you mentioned, guys, Team Lightning's got to get on the board and get on the board often here in the third quarter and let the defense take care of the rest in the fourth. 
Uh, you know, look, I think Team Lightning had more opportunities to score. They've had more potential plays. They, they've been, had great field position, and uh, if it weren't for a couple drop balls and a penalty on a touchdown that was called back, you know, we might have a lot more scoring on their behalf, but uh, now it's, it's time to, to put up. I also want to see if any of the coaching strategy changes a little bit here in the second in the second half as well. But see if they're going to run the ball a little bit more, like you said before, Ron, just pounding it behind uh, the, some of the big boys and, and and controlling the sticks, you know, moving the yard sticks and seeing they can uh, take some time off the clock. Well, I always, as an offensive player, you know, if you can put together 12, 15 play drives, it seems to take a lot out of the defense. And if you remember last year's game, Sean, mm -hmm. there was there was a lot of tired boys at the end, and it was a big smash mouth game. I, I, that's what I thought this was going to turn out to be, but it has, as Les said, it's turned out to be a more of a skill player game at this point. The throwing, the running, the good punt return, special teams have played a big factor. So, uh, again, interesting second half coming up. And it's interesting, you know, we've seen uh, both coaching staffs try and encourage their teams to get some big plays and see if they can make a play to make the, uh, the difference in the outcome of this game, whereas last year it was a little more patient. They were uh, more content to try and extend those long drives and, and let the two teams go after each other. So it'll be interesting to see if those strategies do change here as we get ready for the kickoff. Once again, to reset the stage for you, Team Thunder is wearing white. They will kick off here to start the second half. They're wearing white with blue numbers and blue pants. They'll move from right to left on your television screen. Team Lightning, on the other hand, wearing blue with white and gray pants. And we are underway here to start the third quarter kick goes down is taken at about the 23 yard line. Corey Hucklock on the return, one of the up backs. Hard to pick him up there at first, but certainly can't mistake his running style. He's very powerful when he has the ball, and there you see him come off the field. What impresses me about Corey Hucklock is, is his smarts that he mm -hmm. plays with. You know, he knew that he had to pick that ball up. He knew he was going to have that much blocking and just tried to put his head down and get as much as he could. This is a good football player. Mm -hmm. He's going to make. He's he's going to be seen somewhere in the future. Right, well, he's another one of the guys. Think he's signed with the Bisons at the University of Manitoba, so uh, we'll be able to follow his progress for the next five years. One of Brian Doby's prize recruits in this off season, so we'll follow him for the next five years. Right now, it's Team Lightning with the ball. Nice fake, and the quarterback takes off with it once again. Oh, fumble! Oh. Ball's loose, and it looks like Team Thunder has recovered at Lightning's 53-yard line. What a huge play. I mean, it was a huge offensive play that he had fooled everybody and had nothing but running room. And as a quarterback, when you get that situation and you see these defenders coming at you, you have to slide. You have to put yourself on the ground, and he didn't. He tried to get some extra yardage, and they popped the ball out, and now it's a huge turnover for the other team, who is leading, by the way. And great field position, too. You know, they're looking at the, the other team's 53-yard line, and I guess they're here with goal less. We'll see what their offensive philosophy, if it's changed since the first half, and if they're going to run behind the horses and see if they can get into some pay dirt. Good point there. You know, you take the slide, you end up second and one, but you still have the ball. He tried to make the sticks and ended up coughing it up. Now, coming back the other way, Team Thunder. Looks like Paul Teets is back in at quarterback, and the ball's loose again. It's on the ground. Who's got it? No one right now. It's picked up by Team Lightning, so turnover to turnover. Huge <laughs> plays to start the second half. And they give it right back on the handoff. The handoff was jobbled. Uh, I don't know if it was the running back's fault or the quarterback's fault, but somewhere in the exchange, they put the ball on the ground and couldn't get it back. And it was loose for a few seconds there as well, so anybody could have come up with it, but it was Team, team Lightning that did. And Owen Ferguson from Team Lightning did and had a good return, a good run. Potentially a good score on that, but there's a touchdown saving tackle. So Lawrence under center, his team has the ball back, first and 10 at the Thunder 53. Ball's hand off run between guard and tackle to the left side for a gain of about one, maybe two if he's lucky. Not much on the play. Tom Massey carrying the ball again. So it'll be second. What he gained about a yard, so it'll be second and nine. Ran right into the face of that defense and was taken down, as you mentioned, Ron. One yard gain, not much there. Some extra receivers being brought into the game now. We'll see if they uh, come out with a trips package to one side or the other. They seem to think that they can run that fuse a lot on that uh, on the right side of the defense. They're left offensive, and it hasn't been successful all night. Standard formation here. Two backs in the backfield. Lawrence drops back to pass. Throws downfield. Almost a grab. 
for huge yards by James Fulcher, but the ball knocked away at the last moment by the DB. It looks like it might have been Ed Panting on the corner there. I started to yell interception because the receiver slowed down, which means the ball's underthrown. Gives the defense a back an extra time to try to get up there and either get an interception or knock it down, which he did knock it down. Hey, the ball was, I thought it was there, did a good job. I think it was number 30, Dorian Chamoli, that came in and broke that play up. But, uh, you know, early on it looked like completion, but the DB closed on it and did a good job breaking up the pass. So Hucklock back to punt with the wind at his back, standing at his own 45-yard line. They look like they're coming for the block. Hucklock takes it and drives a deep kick. Going back to Kennard, who takes it back to his own goal line, goes across his goal line, and is tackled for a safety. However, there is a flag on the play. Oh, they marked it on the one. Oh, my, they gave him forward progress there, even though... He was doing the uh, toe tip trip along the goal line there and uh, looked like he had been taken back into the end zone for a safety. Great tackle by, Tad, by Chad Jensen from St. John's. He came down and put a good hit on him. Uh, got a, I think he got pushed into the tackle too. Now that's what the penalty was, a push in the back. But uh, uh, that was a pretty good, pretty favorable spot, I think, uh, on that one. Last Very year. favorable spot. They got away with one there. Of course, it's... It's favorable in terms of the two points that they don't give up. It's not so favorable in terms of field position because they're back at their own one yard line and they're huddling in the end zone as we get a look at this great crowd here checking yeah. out the action at Canada Indian Stadium. This is going to be a very uh, critical uh, series right here because you know that uh, Lightning's defense has been putting a lot of pressure on, uh, on Thunder's offense. Thunder's offense has to come out and at least move the chains once mm. to give themselves some room to kick the ball. And even then, that's not, not that great field position. You know, with a punt, it would probably mean you get the ball above midfield. But they definitely have to do something with this possession. And we've got some movement on the line. And it looks like this will be a legal procedure against Team Thunder. Guess you really can't go back any further than where you're at. <laughs> that's just a little time stoppage and delay, I think. It's not going <laughs> to affect them yardage-wise. But uh, yeah, a little, little inconsistency. And again, with uh, you have different quarterbacks coming out. Sometimes their snap cadence is a little bit different. The guys get used to repetition. So that, that could be one of the causes for that. Oh, they lose the down. Interesting. You lose the down. If you don't have anywhere to go with the ball, you lose the down. So, so that way you can't run out the quarter, for example, by taking 75 straight procedure calls. So, makes it second and 10 at the one. Very difficult position indeed. Teets back in the quarterback, hands the ball off. Patterson. Patterson, as you called, with the run, gets out to about the two or three. Not enough for the first down, obviously, and it means that Team Thunder will have to punt. That was a, a strange set of events. I thought procedure, I guess they had an op option to decline, but I thought procedure was automatic. But uh, uh, something new I just saw there. Well, Maybe it's yeah. a high school rule. I'm not sure that you, you lose the down if, you're, if you can't go back any further. I'm not sure. I've, it's the first time I've witnessed that. Well, you know, uh, what Ron was saying is true. It is an automatic penalty. So because you can't go back any further than where you are, then you lose the down. Mm. You have to be penalized somehow. So. Somehow, yeah. That's it. That's a big penalty. <laughs> it is. Lose it down, down there. Now, the scenario we talked, punting out of their end zone. You know, they, the return guys are at the 40-yard line, so if it, the wind affects it, they could have the ball inside the 30. Or any any kind of good return puts the ball maybe inside the 20. And you're looking at, if you look at any of the flags around here, oh. the team wisely concedes a safety. Um, the wind is coming even stronger right now, so a good choice on the part of Team Thunder to sur surrender, surrender, I should say, the two points to Team Lightning, making the score 8-5. Yeah, had it done that uh, like uh, two plays ago when the safety was really supposed to be a safety. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be further along. Yeah. Yeah. And now I guess we have an option whether they want to kick the ball off or they'll take it on a 35. Looks like they're going to team lightning is going to force them to kick. So they're, they're still going to be in good field position after this change of possession. And you certainly want them to kick off in this situation against the wind and to give your speedsters a chance to establish some kind of return and get even better field position. But let's point out what a smart move that was by Paul Bennett to take the safety. Mm. Very smart. Instead, give up two instead of giving up seven is very smart. And gain 35 yards in the in the pro process, so. Well, know. if you look at the score, eight, five, that, that two gives him five, so he's still a, a, he's still a, a field goal ties the game, it doesn't beat you. But uh, you're right, that, that 35 yards that you gained by being it down is, is huge at this time. So it looks like Team Thunder finally has their strategy worked out here for the kickoff. McTavish again to do the honors.
Winds up a kick. We've got 11.42 to go here in the third quarter, just early on in the stage to the third. Kick goes to about the 30-yard line, where I believe it's Hucklack again who takes it. He's got a seam right up the middle of the field, and he takes it right to the center yard line. That is a very good play, good, good run. He only did one thing wrong at the beginning, and that was backing up into the returner. Yeah, they're always taught those those up backs back there. You know, you don't back up to catch the ball. Always nope. have the deep guys coming forward, get it with the momentum. But uh, a good return to midfield and a nice tackle by uh, Kyle Rota there for the for, for Team Thunder. Because if the up back in the back wasn't paying attention, he would have collided into him. That would have been a fumble. They got the ball. We would have been talking about this totally different. And you think, he, if anything, he should have called him off and said it was his ball and, and used the momentum to get forward. But in any case, balls at midfield for Team Lightning. Handoff. Gain of about five. I missed the ball carrier there. I think it's Richard Sylvester. Yes, it is. Old good Park running back. Number 34 on your screen, Sylvester. It's really good to hear those hits popping from way up here. You know, those kids are out there and they're playing for something, and there's a lot of pride to stay out there. It, uh, once you get between the stripes, it all changes. You know, you're friends and friends, and but uh, different colored uniforms set a lot of things apart. Guys hitting each other hard out here. Second and five. About four minutes into the third quarter here. Once again, Lawrence under center. Drops back. Looks downfield. Pass just out of the outstretched arms of David Albrechtson. He was open. The ball was just thrown behind him, which gave the defensive back a chance to, to run up there and knock him down, make sure he didn't catch it on the deflection. He seems to be hurting a little bit coming off the field. Yeah, as Oops. he stretched out, I think he landed a little funny there, Curtis Stern from Sturgeon Creek, as he comes back. And uh, he's had a good game, made a couple of nice catches. Had that nice touchdown early in the yes. game that was called back on the penalty. But uh, yeah, I think he's uh, maybe ready to roll. And it was Durham on that last play. Excuse me, he's not coming out. He's staying in the game. He's a pretty tough character. Huck clock back to punt again. If oh, he gets this to time the ball. he's not going to get it. Oh, he does pick it up on the bounce, fakes the pass, and then throws the ball to Sylvester. He's got to get a field. He's got a block, oh, and he's got some room. But it's coming back. There's a flag, a block in the back that might go against Carlo Bruno. And but that's a great call by the referee. I didn't think they were going to see that. That's a great call. An incredible play by Hucklack to find Sylvester, who then turned it upfield for about another 25, 28 yards. Block in the back, though, by the receiver, or a member of the kicking team, I should say. We'll see how they sort all this out. Point of infraction was the 47 of Team Thunder, which wouldn't have been enough for the first down. Natural no. instinct, what's he supposed to do? Now, the coaches are having words with each other because there's not supposed to be any fakes or anything in this game, right? Right. But that is not a fake. That That's is, a broken play. That is a broken play. It's a snapped over the head. The, the, the punter just made a play. Number 23, third down repeat. And it's, it's tough, you know. These guys have been playing football, you know, probably since they've been eight, nine years old, and instinct on a bad snap is to do something. Is to it. make it's a tough, play. It's tough not to make that. So, yeah, it, it's uh, that competitive rivalry that the coaches from their playing days have carries over to the coaching on the sidelines. <laughs> it'll, it'll all be discussed later. And even Huck like there was saying, hey, you know, I was trying, he was shaking his head and talking to the referee, just saying I was trying to make a play, you know, he couldn't kick the ball. They called it illegal procedure, and I guess that's the rule that they're that they've put in place for for the fake for the fake. So it's just loss of five and do it again. So we'll see if they can actually get the ball back to Huck like this time they do, and he lines up and lets it go. Low liner, sidewinder goes down the field, takes a bounce, and is picked up at the ten yard line. McTavish, McTavish heading up field with a good burst of speed, making something out of nothing. He gets the ball to about the 22 or 23 yard line. He's got excellent acceleration last season. When he decides to go, he just goes. He was surrounded by five players and decided to, he got out of that. He's surrounded by five players and gets out of that and makes something of it. I watched him play a, a game. They played against Grant Park last year, and they ran a little slot counter to him, and he took it 103 yards for a touchdown. And he's got great great instincts out there on the field and, and good speed. He must have played throw up and kill when he was a kid. You know, we used to play that game where you throw the ball up in the air, and then you, whoever picked it up had to beat up everybody. Everybody yeah. was against that one person. <laughs> he reminds me of that. He played throw up and kill when he was a kid. Called us once again for Team Thunder at the quarterback spot. Hands the ball off. Not much there for number 28, Terrence Patterson. Tried to wait for something to happen. Corey Huckluck again, 
has been all over the field once again, and he did, he just cut that play right off and made him cut back into the pursuit. Loss on the play. Loss looks like yards. about three yards bring up second and 13 at the 20-yard line. Nine minutes even and counting to go here in the third quarter. 8-5 the score, Thunder with the lead here at can Ed in Stadium. Called to center center, two receivers to each side. Play action, looks downfield. Ball's in the air, turning and almost making a spectacular grab is number 21, Mike Malula. Nice adjustment to the ball, I tell you. I had gave himself an opportunity to catch. But uh, at this point, uh, you know, we're eight and a half minutes left in the quarter here and another punting situation. And field position is, is going to be another factor here. I actually getting, thought getting he, I actually thought he was throwing that ball to the inside guy because the defensive back who was covering the inside receiver fell down. <laughs> the other guy was wide open. The referee was covering him. And maybe that's what threw him off. He saw somebody standing there. Third and 13. Adam McTavish stands back at his own six-yard line. Now moves up takes the ball and unloads a low wobbly kick that takes a bounce. Picked up. Oh, nice cut by Lovett. Lovett. Picks it up, takes it to about the 36 if they give him his forward progress here. Great field position once again for Team Lightning and we talked about it as we came out of the break. That Team Lightning's got to take full advantage of this field position to get some points on the board. Well, you know, halfway through this quarter right now, they've uh, managed to get two points out of it. They're still behind. What they need to do is to get six out of it. They need a touchdown out of in this quarter to put them above. Now put the pressure back on uh, Team Thunder. Got a player down on the field as some of the trainers hustle out to the field. Down on one knee is Jock Gemmel, the uh, young man from out of town from Fort Francis, and uh, had a chance to meet him this week. He came by and spent some time at our football club offices for a few hours and a uh, fine young man and it's good that Northwestern Ontario kids get to take part in this now. Well you know when we expanded last year into Northern Ontario we brought Fort Francis Moore and Dryden in and it's made their program so much better because now instead of playing games against each other twice they come in the city and they get seven opponents and it makes it for a much better schedule for them and opportunities to improve and there's an example of we've talked about McTavish from Fort Francis and here's Jock Gemmel they're contributing what's going on on the field. So first and 10 at the 37 yard line. Lawrence under center once again, fakes the handoff, rolls out right, he's got time. Drills one ahead, hard to pick up who made the catch, might be, yes it is, number 88, will love it. I see Wayne Weather standing down there with his hands on top of his head because his defensive end gave up contained big time, which allowed that quarterback to see that and to be able to complete it like he did. That's Lovett's second catch of the day, another big catch. I, you know, fundamentally, he was sound less. As you saw him go on the sidelines, he had the hand, nice catch with the hands, tucked it away, and turned upfield. Hard to make him out there. His numbers are blowing off his uniform. I know he's fast, but he's running right out of his numbers here. Lawrence, under center, he drops back. He's looking again for Lovett. He's got him. He can get to it. Oh, just through his fingertips. Incomplete in the end zone. And that was their favorite play, the out and up. Wheeled it up and, and he was go. right there. The only thing, the quarterback just didn't give him a chance to make the catch. You got to keep it in play. As a quarterback, your job is to keep it in the play so the receiver can make the play. Great effort on the part of Lovett. This is what it's all about, the Subway Senior Bowl trophy. That's what they're playing for, the Jerry James trophy, named after, of course, the former Blue Bomber, who's a football Hall of Famer. Second and 10, Lawrence under center. Backs in motion. Lawrence drops back, looks to his left. Fires it ahead again. It looks like it's intended for Lovett. It's knocked down. And that'll bring up a field goal attempt, it looks like, here for Team Lightning. I tell you, that was uh, number 77, Kevin Brick from Tech Bach. He's had three or four big plays uh, as a secondary press. We had defensive half, and uh, it looks like, uh, is it Lovett or is it uh, Durham from, from Sturgeon Creek? That's down over Actually, there. Actually, it's one Durham. Of the two. Yeah, it is Durham. But, uh, we'll get another uh, good chance going up for the football. And but see, that's what a receiver is supposed to do, even... Even though, that the, even though that the ball was underthrown, it's his job to still to try to stop and go up and get it, put his body in all kind of danger. Mm -hmm. Let's go down the sidelines and Darcy Taves. Darcy? There's a few people hurt on uh, Team Lightning. Uh, we got uh, uh, Matt Wallace. He sprained his ankle late in the first half. He should be all right. He's taped up. He's uh, ready for action. Also, earlier in the first half, 
Matthew Fox had a bad knee injury. It's looking like he won't make any return. And then for Team Thunder, Jock, uh, Jock Gamel, is, uh, he got a banged up hand just recently. It's not bad. He's got a little ice on it. He should be fine uh, already now. So that's what's going on injury-wise. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Darcy Taze from the Team 1290. There we get a look at uh, Durham as he gets to his knees at least. You know, Darcy hasn't been injured yet, so that's a good sign. It is a good sign, knowing his uh, proclivity and propensity for pain uh, uh, as he's faking a hammy injury down on the sidelines right now. There we, there we see I, Darcy. I think he just wants some attention from the trainers down there because they're women, you know. Well, hey, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd fake a hamstring injury uh, to have those folks work on me. As well. I, I'm, I'm going to fight through this one. I'm going to stay in. I'm going to give it my all, 110%, uh, bring in my A game, and uh, I think the injury shouldn't keep me from the sidelines for too long. I should be uh, back helping you guys out. Great primetime player, Darcy Taves, down on the sideline. Those are the kind of players we want. You know, it's uh, interesting they have the shot of the Jerry James Trophy, and it, if you take a look at it in the design, and it's an excellent trophy, but it's got kind of a Stanley Cup uh, thing to it. If you looked on the two plates, it's got all the names of the players and coaches from the winning teams on it, and I think that is something that, through the course of the history of this game, it's going to be something that will be cherished. You'll be able to look back at some of the great names who took part in this game. Field goal attempt is low. Might have been partially blocked. Taken in the end zone. They're going to try and run it out. He's got some room over there. They better get over there and stop him. And Good pursuit uh, on the part of number 26, Alex Miller, to get down there and make the play on, on the trophy. Uh, as we get a look at the trophy, I should say, once again here, the you know, James Trophy. You know what's really neat is that the last day of practice, both teams are out here on the field. They had this trophy sitting there. And uh, one of the coaches, both coaches actually told their team, brought them together and told them to go take a look at it. Yeah. You know, and they looked at it and they saw that their names are, could be placed on it. That's something to fight for too. It's a little bit of motivation as well. Sure, you gotta keep your eyes on the prize as they say. And uh, it's a beautiful piece of hardware, that's for sure. We've got a beautiful game going on right now. 6.54 and counting to go here in the third. 8-5, Thunder lead it over Lightning. And it's Team Thunder with the ball. They advance it via the rush across the 26 to about the 27-yard line. There they go. There's behind that left side of that big offensive line. And you know, if you pick up six yards of crack, it's pretty tough to get away from it. But uh, Scott, or, uh, Scotty Albertson made a nice play filling up from his defensive halfback. And if you've got your defensive halves and safeties making plays all game long, that's not a good sign for your defense. And then when you can, you can pick up some positive yards like they did, the play action is much more effective. Big Lauren Plant right there, 69. Man Mountain on the line. Pass to the outside is complete for a first down. It's uh, Adam Dubuque from Grant Park. And uh, Albertson on the tackle. I have to apologize. I called him Scotty. That's his older brother. This is David Albertson playing here. And Scott played in the first one, the first senior bowl. Dubuque's numbers seem to be flying off, too. They do. These guys are, <laughs> these guys are running fast. Dubuque with a good debut catch here in the third quarter. Get a look at him there. I think they did that on purpose. The see that the scouts were looking at him and say, hey, look at that guy. Holy cow, he's running out of his numbers. Gives the impression of speed. Kind of stuff that drives equipment managers mad. Oh, there's some movement at the line. We talked about it earlier. We talked about Corey Huckluck jumping the snap count, and someone got to the quarterback and told him, look, we got to change it up because he's getting in our backfield too soon. Now, this time it worked against them. So, yeah, first so, and five. So instead of maybe going on two, they go on three, drawing the offside, and that gives them a first, a repeat of the first down. It'll be first and five at the 40 yard line. 5.48 to go here in the third. Remains a three point ball game. Thunder over Lightning, 8 5. It's Team Thunder with the ball against the wind, doing a good job of killing the clock as they're uh, battling the elements here. Good drive going. Caldas under center. Just one back in the backfield. He gets the ball and taken down quickly. Adam Douglas. Mm. Oh, late flag as well. That's a bad, bad penalty to take. You got to know when the play is dead and stop. Tom Wingett from Sisler, a little over aggressive after the whistle, and uh, that's a very costly penalty at this time. Take him out of a second and second and four situation into first and long. And there we're talking about the big boys. There they are, Wing it and, si wing it and Plant from Sisler. Maybe they got angry because they're not being used like they should. <laughs> well, you know those, you know, the old Brett McNeil mentality. Is yeah. that, hey, we're here, let know, us play. Yeah, and Brett's coaching them too, you know, so they probably picked up that from him in the four days they were there. Teams are often a reflection of their coach, that's for sure. And that penalty, of course, they announced it was second down because it came after the game, so it, 
It should be second and 14, even though they've changed it to first. Now they're gonna talk to the, uh, the stick crew on the far side. They do make it second down, so it's second and 14 here. Now saying that, and if you see Lamar McGriggs or Brian Clark or somebody get into trouble or during the season, I had nothing to do with it. That's, that's right, that's, that's a reflection of Dave Ritchie, right? Isn't that it? So. Actually, some, sometimes those linebackers go snake on their own last so Yeah, that's true. He's open. Kennard, oh, and he gets rocked as he tries to make the catch. Moving up on the play number 48, Owen Ferguson. Talking about hard-hitting linebackers. Hey, St. Uh, Paul's Crusader, LB, getting it done there. Ferguson, that's his second time breaking up a play like that, and his second time of almost getting an interception. You know, you mentioned that he's a linebacker, but he also, for Coach Mike Watson, played some, uh, sec some safety. Watch him come to the football. Again, ball, tough again seeing the instant replay, you see the pressure on the quarterback allowed that ball to hang up in the air and allowed the defensive back to come and get it. See, that's why it's so important that all aspects of the game work together. Yeah, it just doesn't happen at one end. It's, it's got to be coordinated. Now, after having first and five and then an sh even shorter distance, it's third and long and Team Thunder's punting. Low line drive kicked. Up to love it at his own 50 and he swarmed. Brought down around the 49 or 50 yard line. We'll see where they spot. It looks like it'll be the 49. Trevor Kenner's boys are doing a heck of a job of getting downfield covered. Well, they did a good job by Paul Bigrass hit on the tackle and number 75 from Kelvin, or 65, I mean, that guy Page, big offensive lineman getting downfield to make a play, so they've got him hustling. And you said it, you said it. An offensive lineman getting downfield like that on a punt is unheard of. Usually that's the time that many offensive linemen take a break and let others go do the work. That's when they got that Gatorade bottle plastered to their mouth. <laughs> First and 10, Team Lightning trying to get something going with the wind here. Sylvester advances the ball about eight yards upfield over center. He's a big, strong runner. You, you think they would use him a little bit more right now. He's also got good speed. Last year, he was the provincial 100-meter champion. So he, he can pick him up and put him down and go with the best of them. But a little misdirection, a little counter back against the flow and uh, picked now, up seven. Now pick it to him and throw it to him in the flat. You saw what happened earlier in the first half. Mm. He threw it to him in the flat. He made a big play out of it. Second and three. Interesting to see what the offense does here. They hand the ball off. They give it right back to him. him. And he oh, pushes ahead. He's, he's gone. He's gone. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Touchdown. Big boy. See, him we just got done talking about his speed and his size, and he broke a couple tackles and took it the distance. And you can see him go. You were calling it by fives. He's very smooth. He's got some good speed. 53-yard touchdown run to the big man, Richard Sylvester, out of Oak Park. And now his numbers are coming off too, Les. <laughs> and we're gonna get another look at this, guys. Just now you know that when, when something like this happens, he's the ball carrier, he gets all the glory, but those big boys up front who created that hole for him right there to get him into the, to the secondary, they gotta get a lot of credit for it. If we've got some young kids watching, uh, which we hope we do for the excitement of this high school football senior bowl, when he got that hand up, his shoulders were squared along the scrimmage, he didn't get twisted or turned, and he kept going forward, squared up, and uh, broke a couple tackles and took it the distance. And you talk about the, the fluidity in his running run. He, once he got into the open, steady run right down to the end zone. Fantastic effort as we have an injured player coming off the field here for Team Thunder. It looks like it's number 36, Chad Jensen, the uh, receiver DB out of St. John's Ti from the St. John's Tigers program. We're gonna get a look at the convert here as they finally get the player off the field. 11-8 for the Lightning. Looking to increase their lead to four if they can make the convert here. And another uh, player leaving the field here for Team Thunder. That's Rory Hughes. Who's been steady on the outside, defensive end, coming they, off. They haven't gotten much when they ran at him all, all day long. And, uh, you know, we look at, we're talking about Corey Hucklett going to the Bisons and Lauren Plant. Uh, Richard Sylvester's another another player that uh, signed on with the U of Manitoba. So the, the local talent stayed home this year. And, uh, like I said, it'd be nice to watch him develop over the next few years. Brian Coach Doby was sitting down here in the stands watching, uh, I guess, his uh, newly recruited talent. He's got to be happy with what he's seen so far. Corey's been playing well on defense, and you know, but what limited time they've done running behind Plant, he's looked good. Convert is good for, looks like uh, Thomas M Massey doing some kicking there from the south side, the left footer putting it through, and let's get a look at this run again, guys. 
What I like about him is he never stopped his feet. After everybody was hitting him on his legs, his legs kept churning and he never stopped his feet and he was in the end zone after that. You can't teach that. No, square it up and go. Yep. Make sure we got 12. We got it, Joe. Coach Hucklack looking on. His team with a four-point lead. I think that was an important touchdown for them. Their defense has been playing extremely well, but they're going to have to go 15 minutes with their backs to looking into, or I should say, looking into the wind. They got to defend that. So well, we talked about them coming out in the third quarter and taking the pressure off of them by getting ahead and putting the pressure back on Team Thunder to see if they can do something with that win in the fourth quarter. And now that has happened. That has happened. But we still have four minutes left in this quarter. A lot can happen in four minutes in, in this Canadian game. Oh. Yes, and if, <laughs> and if you're Coach Hucklack and, and, and crew, Frank Robinson at all, you really want your guys to get another score, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown. Because you got a feeling the four points might not be enough in the fourth quarter. Kickoff goes high, end over end to about the 25. Hard to see who picked it up there. I think that was Adam Colomea from from Sister that fielded that one. He advances the ball ahead to about 31 yard line. Yeah, there he is. That was a. A high kick, but I didn't get much depth on that one, especially you know, with he, the wind. You got to give Adam a good job for catching that, though, because in this wind, it also the ball will go up there and it will fall straight down instead of on an angle. He was right up underneath that and caught it very clean. Get a look at the team lightning bench. They have the lead at 12-8. But they're on defense right now as Team Thunder lines them up. Paul Teets, the quarterback of the Fort Gary Lions program. He's under center, backs in the eye, two receivers to either side. Again, it looks like there's movement on the line, no flag. Play continues, great run for a pickup of about seven. That's that Terrence Patterson again, and you talked about his good feet earlier in the program, Les, and uh, they ran behind the big boys, and when that wasn't there, he, he cut to his right and picked up about three more. Sylvester, the touchdown run just moments ago. And then had to turn around and kick the ball off. <laughs> Let's go down to him right now with Darcy Taves, Darcy. Uh, Richard, uh, get the touchdown for your team in the second half. Uh, you guys coming back now, uh, you got to feel pretty good. Yeah, credit to the Lions for stepping it up. That's what it's all about, the line. They opened up a huge lane yeah. for you, so you can just run right through. Yeah. So what, what are you guys thinking now? Like, uh, what's the game plan? Get the ball. Get the ball. Right now. Simple yet effective. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you very much, Darcy. Now, you got to tell you, that's a good running back, got a good head on his shoulders. The first thing he credited was his off offensive line. Yeah, he'll make a lot of friends doing that. It's, it wasn't me, me first, it was the team. And he gave credit to the guys who made it happen for him. Good yeah. job, Sylvester. And during that interview, uh, Corey Hucklock made another nice play on, on Terrence there. Uh, we went from a second and three, and Corey made a tackle for no gain, so it forces us into a, a punting situation. Plus, they also asked him, what's the game plan? <laughs> he said, to get the ball back. <laughs> oh, here it is. <laughs> they got it back. Their defense has been doing that all game, though, so. That's, it's pretty basic stuff, but it works when, when you can execute it as you get a look at Yankee and Wallace and some of the other Team Lightning members. They have the lead, 2.13 to go here in the third quarter. Low snap, McTavish unloads it, just eludes the block. Taken by Sylvester, he bounces and picks it up, but gets taken down. And it looks like Hucklack will get called for a block in the back. Sylvester, uh, must be out of breath after running the end zone, running off the field, kicking off. Oh, he's limping too. Not a good sign. Took the ball kind of awkwardly on the bounce there. No, I don't really think they want him hurt right now. Well, because, you know, they say running play. backs only get good. They get better the more times you hand them the ball. So if he can stay healthy and stay in the game and they can keep giving him the ball, he might break another one. He could, but, uh, you know, you see him lipping off there, as, as we saw earlier, and uh, he had a little bit of knee trouble last year. So hopefully uh, that's not an indication of what's happened to him again. But nice play by Adam Dubuque on the tackle to, uh, to uh, stop Richard from turning that uh, return into a long game. He said the flag was thrown in air, so no infraction on the play. First and 10 to the 41-yard line. Team Lightning with the ball and 148 to work with here in the third quarter. Oh, tough play for the oh. quarterback. Rolling out and oh. getting sacked. Oh. For a huge <laughs> loss. Look at Wayne Weathers. He is going up to the sideline, running down the sideline with his players, congratulating him because contain, you could draw that one up and put it in the books under the dictionary of contain. This is how you do it. Wayne made one like that in the Grey Cup this past season. Here we see Sharma rolling out, but not far enough and quickly getting there, number 50, Derek Sutherland to haul him down. 
And you're right, Les, they've been trying to run those little boots uh, all night long, and uh, they broke and contained sometimes, but not that time. Yeah. Sutherland was right there, and uh oh look out, Mr. Sharma. What a big play for his team. Look at the, no, they're second and very long. About 24, it looks like, maybe make it 25. They hand the ball off for protection purposes mainly. Gain of about five, but it'll obviously be a punting situation here for Team Lightning. So maybe a bit of a momentum changer as we get in the last minute of the third quarter. Now, you got to think, as a coach, I'm going to ask you guys, you're the coach. 54 seconds, 51 seconds left to go in this quarter. You're punting with the win. Do you go after the block? Well, it depends if you go by the guidelines of what we're supposed to have here or not. We're not <laughs> supposed to go after the block, but I think, yeah, you've got to do something to, to get yourself another opportunity to put some points on the board into the win. But uh, they've, only got, like they've only got one returner back there, so there's an extra man up on the line. So maybe they are thinking about it. No, they actually back off and set up the return. Davis on the run. Good cut. A couple of great moves by McTavish. Well, they're in a good situation here. Now we've got 29 seconds left, so if, if they do get stopped, at least they're going to be kicking with the wind, and it's going to put uh, put Team Lightning deep in the hole. You know, I'd really like to see them try to get the ball to McTavish because the way he's been returning these punts, just to hand it, throw him the ball in a five-yard stop or something and just make him happen. Let's, he's athletic. Let's see what he can do with he's it. He's athletic. He can make things happen. Wait, say, D. So 21 seconds and counting now. Here in the third quarter, first and 10, balls at the 51 yard line of Team Thunder. They have the ball. Backs in the eye, they split out. Pitch. Oh, great cutback. Great cutback. He's and gone. It's gone. Oh, he is gone. Can he out last oh. Defenders know. A fantastic pickup for Terrence Patterson, the running back from St. James Rods. Huge gain. Look at his big boys going up and congratulating him because they're make, he's making them look good. Can we find him in there? <laughs> Let's see if we can get a look at this here. There's the end of the run. I'll tell you, that was a nice job by Patel. We thought he was gone and he- But we, we talked about his eyesight, his vision, for him to be able to get it on a toss, going to one way and cut back across the grain and then go back again to the way he's supposed to and make a huge play is something. Here it is again. Yes, some fantastic vision on the part of Patterson. Just couldn't quite elude the final defender. Now, first and 10. At the 18, sorry, 17 yard line, pass out to the right side is complete. And going out of bounds, looks like it's number 34, Adam Douglas. They're putting together a nice little drive here. And, at that, the end. and that marks the end of the third quarter. So not bad for going against the wind in the final stages of that frame. Our score after three quarters, Team Lightning leads at 12A, but Team Thunder is on the move. Guys, a great way to end the, end the quarter for Team Thunder. You guys have got something going here, you know. Uh, last year, they, this was an exciting game going into the fourth. This year, it's an exciting game going into the fourth. And nothing's been decided yet, that's for sure. Well, you've got to think that Team Thunder is pretty happy with the situation now. They're inside the 15-yard line with the first down, 15 minutes into the start of the fourth quarter. So uh, they're only down by four at this point. So they've no. got an opportunity to make some things happen. And knocking on the door. You've got to think of the worst-case scenario from here, you come out of here with three. With worst, three. Worst case. Let's go down to field, field level where Darcy Taves is standing by. Darcy? Uh, thanks. I got Rick House with the East Coach for uh, Team Lightning. You guys uh, stepping it up here in the uh, third quarter. Yeah, we uh, we were waiting to – actually, we've had lots of opportunities during the game uh, so far. We were just waiting for one of the players to, you know, make a great play. And Richard uh, Silvestri did that and got us the touchdown. They have a, a, a late drive in the third quarter. Now you guys got to stop them. What's, what's the key right now? <laughs> yeah, I think you just said it there. The key is to stop them now. Uh, we've had a number of opportunities with our with the pass uh, pass game. Balls hit with guys in the hands. If they catch the ball, then they get a touchdown. They're a hero. So we just need uh, we need someone to make a play. And uh, I suspect these guys are going to go in and get a score here, which will put them up. So we're we're going to be coming back in the fourth against the win. So we have to have players make the plays when they have a chance. Okay, thanks a lot, Rick House, Bomber alumni, coach for Team Lightning. Thank you very much, Darcy and. Uh, Great play, Teets going to McTavish, who turned it back inside, guys. I know we were just jumping, seeing the way he made that move. I think that they must, they must have some kind of headphones down there and <laughs> listening to what we're saying. Is there a you monitor know, down we, there? Because we had just got done talking about getting the ball to him early so he could make something happen with it because he's good with his cuts. I think Darcy's feeding stuff from the feed down there. I he think must he's be. Yeah, what we talk about up here. I think he's sandbagging one of the teams here. You know? you know, but Darcy was talking to one of the great receivers in the Canadian Football League. I had a chance to play at Winnipeg for three years and being on the sideline and watching
watching Rick House make spectacular catch after catch after catch was amazing. And it's a fellow who had eyesight problems out of college coming into the pro game, and he made everything out of his abilities. Rick House, one of the all-time greats. Backs in the eye. We have a flag on the play. Running ahead and pushing his way towards the end zone for a touchdown is number 34, Adam Douglas. But hold the phone. There is a flag on the field. Nice play and still a great running for him by Douglas. To, he got hit at the two but forced his way in the end zone. But it looks like we're going back. That always hurts. White number 69. Oh, that hurts. First See, now in the National Football League, they get fined for jumping off sides like that. I don't know how much, if it doubles, if it, they get fined, they jump off sides and it's a touchdown. But they get fined for that. These kids better learn that in case they go to play in the National Football League. <laughs> learn to snap kick. Well, if it's plant and you're going to try to take his money, you go get it. Uh, yeah, I'm not really. going to get it. <laughs> the big man, it's surprised he moved ahead of everybody else there, but he certainly did. Repeat a first down, first and goal. Oh. This time, Douglas just gets creamed by Hucklack again, stepping up and making a play. Corey Hucklack even had Lamar McGriggs jump up out of his seat just now. Now goes, that's a heck of a linebacker play. A linebacker can recognize another linebacker's play and get excited about it. True. Went to the well with the same play that scored the touchdown, but this time Corey got in through that guard tackle gap and made the hit in the backfield to tackle for a loss. And that's about the third or fourth tackle for a loss he's had today like that. Just, just reading the, the offense correctly, shooting the gap or making a play. The thing is, is he's doing it when his team needs it. Backs in the eye, receiver comes to the left, that's three receivers high. Teets under center, pitch, toss sweep to the left side. Douglas trying to make something happen, and he gets brought down around the nine yard line. Defense makes a stand again. Oh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm laughing right now because Corey Hucklock, who is one heck of a football player, ran into a brick wall this time in number 69. He just got knocked right off his feet. Now see that kid right there. I hope he's around. <laughs> you know, the Winnipeg can get him at one time. That's a big boy. And after he knocked Corey down, he went downfield and got another one. So we had two pancakes on the same play. Oh my goodness, you love that. Lauren Plant, we're talking about six, seven, three hundred plus, and uh, skilled, quick, and he's got a great future in this game. And now a field goal attempt from 16 yards out by Luke Kennard, which is crucial. It should make the difference one if he hits it. There's a flag on the play. The kick is good. We'll see what happens with the flag, though. You have to think if it's against the defense, you don't take points off the board. And if it's against the offense, you move them back move and them. kick it again. Exactly. Looks like they're going to be moving it back and kicking it again. Dan Hucklack looking on, trying to assess what the referees will come up with here. And they're coming off the field, so it looks like it's good. They're going to say flag thrown in air. Field goal. So the field goal stands. It's a one-point ball game. Team Lightning in blue leading it 12-11 over Team Thunder. But a good drive put together by the Thunder crew there to get back in this one. Just and a big one confidence ball. builder. Huge confidence builder for the offense to be able to do that late in the game like that. But again, a penalty, you know, you, you, they come out of it with three, which we said they absolutely had to, but uh, to take a touchdown off the board definitely hurts. Oh, yeah, we forgot that they were in the end zone and had a penalty called. Team Lightning electing to take the ball at their own 35-yard line. 12.43 remaining in the fourth quarter here. You know, it'll be interesting to see how this uh, fourth quarter develops because uh, we've gone to 15-minute quarters for this game, and in the high school league, we only play 12, so they're in uncharted territory here. They're not used to going this long. I think with what, what's at, at stake and the kind of game that it is, they don't mind. They probably want to play another one. Oh, yeah. They'd love to, and it's good preparation for the next level where they will be playing 15-minute quarters. Sharma in the center. All kinds of movement on the line. This is, you've got to think this is procedure against the offense. Again, we had a guard who was overzealous and uh, jumped offside, and that's going to be against them in the first and 15 here in a minute. You can hear the wind whipping through our crowd mics here and uh, through the mics up in the booth here. Just blowing very strongly right now. Stronger than has all day, and it started out pretty quickly too here. So. I'm sure that'll come into to play as we get into the later stages of this ballgame. 
Well, we had a one-point ball game. Last year we had a one-point ball game. Went final play. Went down to the final play. The one very of the final game. play of the game. And I know that's a, a very exciting way to win, but it's also a very disheartening way to lose. Mm. And we're referring to a missed field goal last year and a missed field goal return that ended up being a forced fumble and a recovered fumble for a touchdown. So anything can happen in this game as we see the second back, Sylvester, getting it. And he gets met unceremoniously after about a two-yard gain. The defense is picking it up on the other side now. They know that the crucial, uh, you know, it's the fourth quarter. This is it right now. You got to play for the win. And they've uh, also picked up their game, too. And they've got the wins at their back. They know if they shut it down, they're going to get good field possession. Their offense put a good drive together last time. And they're just going to feed off each other and uh, hopefully put some points on the board to win it. They actually, it's actually a loss of two on the play, or, or sorry, loss of three. Or sort of pick up two after the five yard penalty, my fault. Sorry, second and 13, high pitch. Oh. Sylvester throwing the ball downfield. Interception. And almost picked off. I know they're angry. I don't think that that is one of the plays that they put in that these teams were supposed to be able to have the same playbooks. I think that they kind of went off the <laughs> They drew, the they drew that one up on the, on the side of the turf there because there, there are supposed to be no trick plays in this game. And, uh, <laughs> hey, but they pulled, one out of, they pulled one out of the old uh, playbook there. Uh, page 58 from someone's playbook. And uh, I don't think now they know that opens the door for anything. But I think, you know, they, they came out with their base stuff and whatever little gadgety things. I think they're more concerned about the, the fake field goal, fake punt type things than they were about those types of things. <laughs> Seeing everything here in this 2002 Subway Senior Bowl. And now Hucklack back to punt. Oh, the first bad kick he's had. Oh, but he gets the benefit bounce. of a bounce. Here's Patterson. Oh, oh. And Patterson watches oh. it go out of bounds. That's why you try to never, as a returner, to let the ball hit the ground because it's going to bounce either by you for, you know, a great yardage or it hits you and it's a fumble. And it's, you never let it hit the ground. Well, after it hit the ground, it rolled for what ended up being a 48-yard punt for Hucklock. So it looks good on paper, even though it was kind of ugly in execution. But he'll take it as it kind of turns the field around now. Team Thunder with the wind at their backs and 10.45 on the clock. They trail by one. And Need to put up. together another drive here. A very good drive they had last time. Let's see if that gives them some confidence here. Once again, Ryan Caldas under center, backs in the eye. Hand off to Patterson. Mm. He's brought down quickly. They are stunting their backers like crazy. Yeah, that's Corey Blunt from Oak Park coming in and make the play. Oh, no, that's is that Huck like again or was that Blunt? No, nope, that was Blunt. Okay. Now, for a team who likes to stunt like that, normally you try to get your backs involved in the pass, you know, in the pass routes because now who's going to cover him if yeah. the linebacker's rushing the quarterback? Yeah, they're open, so you gotta, you got to see if they'll make that adjustment here. Once again, backs in the eye. Now they break it. Two receivers to both sides. Caldas drops back, seven step drop. Quick pass is deflected. Caldas goes after, but it falls incomplete. So a quick uh, two and out here for Team Thunder. Good stand by Team Lightning on defense. Mm. Good, good pass rush by uh, by Olsen there. I think he got the block. Did it hit him in the, in the face mask or did he get his arms up? I just saw the deflection, I didn't see, but. Uh, Let me tell you why people say there's three aspects of the game. Get a look at it here. Sorry, Les. And that might have just hit him right in the noodle. Yeah, it did. Hit him right in the head when he jumped up. Sorry, Les. Go ahead. The three aspects of the no, game. No, we're talking about the importance of the three aspects of the game, why special teams is so much an important factor of the game. The field changed around dramatically when the guy let the ball hit the ground and it went by him. And now they're punting out of their own area and giving the other team great field position if there's a good return. Well, they got to hang on to the ball first. And fortunately, uh, Lovett was there to pick up the ball after I believe it was Durham had uh, dropped it. I think that's the second time we've seen that uh, that happen there to Team Lightning where they've, they've dropped the, the punt. Fortunately, the other return man is back there to, to cover up for his mistakes. 9.30 to go here. 12-11 the score. Team Lightning in blue have the lead. And they've got the ball. The wind's at their back here, and it's blowing quite briskly at Canada in Stadium. First and 10 at their own 42 as they break the huddle. Looks like Lawrence is reported back in at quarterback. Looks like they're going to try to run the, run the ball now. Backs in the offset eye, and they do indeed run for a gain of about two. 
not much there for Sylvester. You know, there's a big tip off when you're uh, trying to figure out run or pass. You look at an offensive lineman, if he's leaning heavy on those fingers, he's going, it's a run. Mm. <laughs> if he's light on those fingers, he's dropping back. He's got to get out of there. You know, the weight difference is going to let you know. <laughs> and those uh, big old linemen love to run blocks, so they'll they try and get every advantage that they can. Get a look at the uh, Team Thunder bench as they catch, uh, catch their breath here and get ready, hopefully, to go back on offense for their side. And here comes Derek Sutherland from Churchill. He made that big play on, on, with contain on the boot pass earlier in the third quarter. And um, May was in on the tackle, uh, in on the tackle of Sylvester on that play and got shaken up a little bit. But uh, again, he's a gamer. He'll get fixed up with the training staff there and he'll be back out there. Second and eight, ball to 44. Lawrence rolls out to his right. Passes ahead. It's complete oh, for a first down. Great job of the receiver coming back to the ball. Just an excellent job. That was Lovett again. Yes, it was. The, a man who's had a very good game here today for Team Lightning. I don't know what I like, and we mentioned it his, in his second catch, how, how nice he accepts the ball and gets his hands on it. Didn't That one he caught it in his hands and didn't let it get into his body. And uh, nice throw by Lawrence, though. It put it in a place where only his receiver could get it. So once again, Lawrence under center, backs in the offset eye, two receivers to either side. Hand off. Mm. Oh, met hard in the backfield was Sylvester. And you can hear the cracking of the pads and, and everything up here. Solid hitting going on. I think we're seeing a little more blitzing going on here. They're starting to send a few more people trying to make some plays. And oh, did he ever time that perfect in the hole, though? And a good play, and a good play when they needed it, they really. So a couple of substitutions, one on either side here as we get ready for this down. Second and 11 after a loss of one. Lawrence rolls out to his left, looking for Lovett. Oh, but Lovett, no, sorry, it was, uh, it was Durham who made that catch. Nice pattern by Durham. He, he ran that deep out and he came back, losing ground, going to the sideline, and again, running away from the defensive back. Nice throw by Lawrence yeah. again. And it's a great throw. Let's We're go down to the sidelines where Darcy Taves is standing by. Darcy. Uh, thanks. Uh, Injury-wise on uh, Team Lightning, uh, Richard, um, Richard Sullivan had a bad knee earlier, walked it off. He had a bad wing, his elbow was bothering him, he walked it off. Over on Team Thunder, Derek Sutherland just came off with a bad ankle. So what do they do? He walks it off. They just tape him up. These guys are animals. These guys are in it for real. Other than that, nothing's really going on injury-wise. Matthew Fox not going to get back in. Back to you guys. So They were so listening the, to Darcy. He, they were. And Fox, so Fox won't walk it off, but everybody else has pretty much as we see Hucklack unloading a sidewinder missile that goes back to Patterson at his own eight-yard line. Met at the 10, he fights for about another two yards. A great coverage by Team Lightning. It's not only great coverage, but a great punt by Huckler. Mm. Kick it in between the numbers and the sidelines so you allow your, your chase team or your cover team to pin him deep and doesn't give him an opportunity to run because, as we've seen, uh, Terrence Patterson has a lot of ability, and if he gets out in the open field, it could go for a long distance. I was really shocked to see Patterson just to take it right up the sideline and not look to go to the field because he had a wall that was over there that was big as all. <laughs> He could have ran for days. He's done that a couple of times already. They spot the ball at the 11, first and 10. Called us under center, backs in the eye. Hand off is to the first back through. Oh, look at that. That's Matt Harding from Churchill. We talked about him earlier being the Harry Hood winner. And uh, just straight ahead, that first time they've handed off to full back instead of letting him lead block. And he packs a load when he comes through. And you know what's good about that? They had an offensive lineman down there that was shoving him, you know, doing the extra work. They love to see offensive linemen and do that. You know, you do your, your main job and then do something extra. He was down there shoving his back forward. Pickup of about eight, should be second and two at the 19. So certainly a good situation here, 14 Thunder, 619 to go. They trail by one. Quick movement at the line. Yeah, it's going to be close. Harding again, but it's yep. going to be close whether or not it's a first down. I have to take a look at that spot. Uh, now, could be third and short here, less. Now, it would be close enough to go for it. It's just the question of the position of the field because it is deep within Team Thunder's side of the field here. It, it stops that blitz by Corey Hucklock by getting in there really fast when you give it off to the first back like that and have him pick up positive yardage like he's doing. 
It makes that linebacker who's blitzing think now when he goes through there, who's going to have it? Because he could run right by him. For the first time today, we're going to have the chain gang come in if they can get the, uh, the sticks set up correctly. And here they come. So this will be close to see whether he got sufficient yardage or not. Looks like a first down. What do you say, about half the football, do you think? By the tip. From the painted tip. From the painted tip. Very close, so indeed, first down for Team Thunder. Six minutes even remaining here in the fourth quarter, 12-11, Lightning leading it over Thunder. Big time drive here, they've got to keep this thing going and oh, down by a point. They got a long way to go, so they're going to need like a, a good 20, 30 yard play somewhere in this drive. Backs are in the eye again. Second back this time, it's Patterson working his way around, trying to Look make something happen. What a great <laughs> effort. Could have been tackled at the line of scrimmage, got out of it, and ends up picking about uh, eight, eight or nine. <laughs> he picked up eight yards out of nothing. Out of nothing. And four players had a shot at him, too. But he continued to fight his way through for the game. He kind of reminds you of the back that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have, huh? <laughs> Charles Robert? A little bit, yes. Those moves. They give him eight, second and two, backs again in the eye. And they give us to Patterson again. He's looking for a hole. He fights his way forward. And this will be close again, but he might not have it. I think he's a good yard short here. They're just going to give him a mark at about the 30-yard line. And they had to get to the 31 for a first down. So it's decision time again for Team Thunder. Lightning looking on, wondering what their fate is with 4.55 to go. They're not even going to measure this one. It's a half yard short, but it does look like they're going for it. They will go for it here. Trailing by one and time ticking away here. They're trying to make something happen by continuing this drive. And this is very huge considering that Team uh, Lightning has, their defense has been stepping up big time after time after time. Move so this is a huge play for our Team uh, Thunder. T tackle switch on the O-line before they get set here. Trying to draw them offside. Quarterback Caldas keeps. He should have enough just by the, the look of the spot here. Well, they had them all packed in in the box, I'll tell you. Good drive by that big offensive line. There's Lauren Plant signaling the first down. I, I guess he'd be safe to go behind if you need uh, half a yard. Oh, yeah. His body's about half a yard wide. You know? <laughs> just wide. Yeah, not long. Wide. 422. And ticking away here in the fourth, 12-11. Team Lightning, the blue side, lead it. Team Thunder, the white team, with the ball and driving. Caldas drops back, throws the ball for Kenner downfield. Nice grab, he bounces off the defenders, and had he been able to keep his bounce, he could have turned it into more. That's the big play we were talking about that we needed to see for them to continue this drive. Well, the other thing, and now it puts them down inside the 40 or inside the 50 yard line. They're in a situation now down by a point where a single ties it up, if that's the case. But uh, this is turning into the Luke Kennard show because he scored their, their only touchdown. He converted that and he's got the field goal. You know, we're talking about that plant kid. We haven't mentioned that this kid is playing with shorts on. <laughs> it's a hot day, Les. Pick up of uh, 29, I believe it is, on the play. Handoff to Patterson. He kicks it out left. Can he elude the tacklers? Has so far, but he only picks up about a yard. Which is a very good, smart play again by that running back. Knew that he could not beat the man to the corner, so he put his head down and see what he could get out of it. Had a great job by, by uh, Owen Ferguson, number 48, uh, on the Lightning team coming from that free safety position and getting up and yes. stopping. Now that game, we, know, we've, we've talked about people having uh, a good game. He has played a great game too as well. He's been good on the run and he's had some nice pass breakups. Yes. They give him two yards on the play, second and eight. Ball at the 43 yard line. Pass out into the flat is no good. That's the time you want to take your time. It's second and eight. You're driving down the field. There's three minutes left to go in the game. You're down behind one. Uh, you want to take your time. Make sure you complete that pass. Mm. I think Caldas rushed that one a little bit. 
you know, as I, as I look back on it, Dubuque was just coming out of his break if he'd given him right, maybe set up a little better and, and got a little bit of a throw because he was open out in the flat. And plus, he didn't have no rush on him. It wasn't like he was getting ready to get hit. He had time enough to sit there and wait for that to, to develop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like this, right? Okay, they're going to tap so you every time. Team Thunder making it, right? Turn it up to the open. Drive like you did, and it's the same thing you were doing with these runs here, right? For your shoulder pads and the goal line is there. Once you bounce outside, don't run sideways. Take it straight up. That, that's very good coaching, by right? Ryan right. right. Marks, head coach at St. John's. Run north and south, not east and west. Hunt is driven to about the five-yard line. Oh, baby! Oh, here, so he here he goes. 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, midfield, 50. 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Wow. 105 we'll five yard return. He's had a great game receiving wise from that slot back position. And we talked about his skills offensively. What a great run. He set it up. He took it upfield a couple steps, allowed the wall to develop, got back outside, ended up breaking McTavish's tackle at about midfield. And Fortunately, the goal one was where it was because I think the gas tank was getting a little empty at the end of that one. We're going to get another look at this here in a moment. Look at him wait for the block. He waited for that block. He knew that he was going to be able to get by him somehow. But like you said, the gas tank's running on empty pretty soon. The monkey jumped on his back right there. You can see him leaning back. Touchdown. Great play. I like watching plays like that. 105 yard. Hunt return touchdown, and the convert is good. We talked about special teams being big. They've been huge so far, and that reestablishes the eight-point lead for Team Lightning with just 224 to go here in the fourth. Which I like the way this sets up. You know, we get Team well, Team Thunder coming down if they score. They go for two. Go for two for the tie. Yep. You gotta like that. Uh, Will's Do they have happy. overtime in this? We, we wondered we about talked that about last, it last year, year but we, we never did, did find out. Never but, discussed uh, it this year, but uh, there's there's Will Lovett on the screen. Great foot return and receiving the congratulations from his teammates. Where is he going to school? And we well, believe I haven't heard anything yet, whether he's going to be playing uh, major, where he's going rifles, or U of M. And we'll, we'll find out where he's going to school as we go down to Darcy Taves at the sideline to ask him about the touchdown. Darcy? So uh, that, that kind of uh, may be the icing on the cake, huh? Well, I hope so. We just have to trust our defense will hang in there. I just did my best. Where'd you see the opening? I just look for it and try to follow my blocks. That's all I, do I trust that my teammates are gonna make the blocks for me. There you go, touchdown, makes it 19-11. Back to you guys. You right. gotta give him some air down there, man. <laughs> <laughs> gotta be an oxygen tank somewhere around. You mean for Darcy? Well, he just ran a hundred and something yards. <laughs> oh, for Love It. Oh, I thought you meant for Darcy. But yeah, Darcy too. But uh, great job, Darcy on the sidelines there, getting our man Love It after that touchdown. And now Team Lightning to kick off. Short kick, high, and ran taken at the 35-yard line. Ball away up from Stisler. And he gets hit a couple of times and eventually falls down about the 40, 41-yard line. And maybe uh, Coach Mark should uh, pull should him aside because he's should just be uh, talking to the running back, get square and go, go upfield. Yeah, don't go sideways, go upfield. He missed out on that conversation. I, I guess, yeah, he's defense, call him his defense, that's why. <laughs> So first and 10 for Team Thunder. They're down by eight. It's 19-11, 2.19 to go. So they've got to put together a drive and get in the end zone. And as we talked about, they've got to go for two if they are successful in the scoring. The stage is set, for sure. Well, we've got Luke Kennard, who's been the offensive thrust behind this team to date, see if they can get the ball to him. And Paul Teets, it looks like, is back in at quarterback. Play action. He's under pressure, and he's sacked. Give the sack to number 36, Michael Watt. He had some help as well. Good coverage downfield. I think Teach was trying to go down to, to Kennard, and it was a good cut. I think that's what you call coverage sack. Yep. Nobody to throw to. Closed okay. it down. Let's get a look again at a different replay of that touchdown, guys, and we'll see what, uh, what Lovett did here on this play. Good punt. Got good distance on it. He caught the ball cleanly, took it upfield. Boom, cut out backside, allowed the wall to develop. There it is. Here comes Curtis Durnham, lead him up. Well, if it slows down, lets him get a little bit of push off on McTavish, enough so he can get around the corner, and there it is. Love it going all the way for the 105-yard punt return touchdown. 
Uh, in live action, Paul Teach tried a long pass from about uh, 20 yards out to the left side of the field. It went incomplete. We have an injured player down on the field for Team Thunder. 150 to go here in the fourth, and uh, there we see the player down on the field. That quarterback sack on the first down really hurt them because now you're stuck with second and 15. You got to throw the ball deep down the field to try to pick up the first down. The other team is just going to sit back in the zone and see if you can complete it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he overthrew him. Now they got to kick the ball and hope their defense can stop him, two and out, and get the ball back. And that's one of the things that the punt return touchdown did. It fires up a defense. They just go out and make one big play, and then they can sit back just like you said, their lesson. You know, good plays fuel teammates to make even bigger and better plays. And it, it's happened here for Team Lightning late in the fourth quarter here as they lead at 19-11. Don't have any idea of who the injured player is down on the field, but... I think uh, it's uh, Jason Quick from St. John's who that pass was intended for. Mm. But you know, with a minute 50 left, there's still time. Get a good punt, get a, a two and out by their defense, take possession of the, of the ball on the potential exchange on punts. And we still, I mean, we still have a good game. If, if that offensive team from the Lightning can take this ball and just grind it out, then they can run it out. So uh, we'll see what happens. Let's go down to the sidelines where Darcy Taves is standing by once again. Darcy? I'm with uh, Wayne Weathers. Uh, Wayne, you seem to be having the uh, the most fun out there, but the, the fun's the, if fun time's over. Now it's time to get real serious, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm enjoying watching the game and stuff, but I want my team to win, so... Uh... We got one sack so far. The other team's got two. I'm worried about defensive line, and uh, I want to see more sacks out of them before the time's up, regardless of the score. You're running back and forth. You're almost getting more exercise than any of the guys out there. Well, you know, I'm getting ready for the season, you know, so I'm getting hyped. I want to play right now. I want to sneak on and put a jersey on and go play. So this is half coaching, half training? <laughs> half coaching, half training. Just get my mental down. I'm watching a lot of football, lots of good football, lots of good, uh, lots of good athletes here. Okay, thanks a lot. Wayne Weathers, Bomber. Uh, let's go back to you guys. You see, I, as a coach, I love hearing my players say stuff like that. Dave Donaldson also spoke about how he wants to put on his equipment and go out there and play. And Marvin Griggs is standing up here with us. He was, can't wait to get out there and play. Marcus Howell was just Marcus running, Howell's in the just running here. Yeah. yeah, I mean these guys, you know, uh, they they left the, the season with a sour taste in their mouth and they want to do something about it, and I love that. I look down on the on the Team Thunder sidelines, and Brett McNeil's got his offensive line there. He's getting them ready to go because he they've got confidence in their defense that they're going to get the ball back and get one more kick at getting a touchdown to tie this thing. Could be on a on a turnover. You never know. Kick is taken by Durham. He goes up the left side. He eludes the first blocker. Stiff arms the second one, and then gets ridden out of bounds. So as you gentlemen have mentioned, Team Thunder's defense has to come up big with 1.38 to go here. Try and get them two and out, maybe four and out. They've got to get the ball back and try and give their offense a chance to tie this game up. If your Team Lightning, hey, kill some clock, get some first downs, and see if you can run this baby out. That's exactly what they'll try to do. They'll keep the ball on the ground. I'd be very surprised to see them try to throw the ball right now. Had a look on your screen at Curtis Durham out of Sturgeon Creek. The big back is not in the game, though. Nope. Once again, Lawrence at the quarterback spot. Hand off, I believe that's to Massey. Thomas runs it out to about the 47, maybe 48 yard line. And this is the time as a running back, you know, yeah, you want to get gain yardage, but protect that football. You get close to contact, cover it up with both hands, turn over it will kill you down at this point in the game. Well, you've got control and can run that clock out with a couple first downs, protect the football. Get a look at some of the big old linemen there. For Team Lightning, they lead it by eight. Hand off again to Massey. Oh, big hit is going on. You can hear it up here. Decision time, third and short. Frank Robinson, and Rick House, and the coaches are looking down the line to see if he's there. I don't think he's got it, though. I don't think there's anywhere near to making a decision on this one. Kick the ball. Yeah, you got you, you, you don't want to turn the ball over on downs middle of the field and or even in your own end of the, the field. So they'll likely kick this one away. I mean, like, you're, they're winning by eight. You know, you want to make that team drive the full length of the field, earn a win. If they're going to get, don't give them a win, make them earn it. Make them earn it. Yeah, make them drive the full field score and then have to go for the two point conversion. That's right. Don't make it any easier for them. So, 113 to go here in the fourth. 19 11, Team Lightning leading over Team Thunder. 
Now, if they do kick, or we have seen, if they do punt, we have seen one snap rolled back on the ground and one snapped over the head. So, I mean, this is high school football. There's no guarantees that this thing's going to get executed either. And we've seen a punt return for a touchdown, so they well, can go. you got McTavish and Kennard back returning it. Uh, both of these kids have shown that they got good speed and, and uh, good uh, jukes. They could probably get it in the end zone on their special teams just like they did. Wouldn't that be a game? And uh, as we look on our screen, the person dancing, that's not Darcy, that's the subway mascot in behind him there. So as we, <laughs> as Darcy checks him out there. It's kind of shaped like Darcy though. <laughs> I think I think Darcy's gonna want to fight us afterwards here, but, uh, uh, but a good crowd here at Canada in Stadium taking in, Taking in the action. You know what? I think Darcy's going to get it on with him right now. Let's look at this. I don't know. I said, Darcy. I'm, I'm going to see for some reason, and I don't understand why, but yo, Subway guy, <laughs> can you bust the move? Huh? There you go. No, you Darcy. working it, baby. You working it. Darcy, you're damning better than him. <laughs> Woo! Dar Darcy Taves getting his freak on down on the side. Oh, the line. freak is on, and I did break it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Darcy. Well, we're having big time discussions as what they're going to do with the ball sitting at the 50 yard line, third and one. They've got that whole offensive unit over there. All the coaches are together. I wonder how long this timeout is allowed to be. Yeah, it's, they're probably uh, <laughs> they're entering the next generation here. But uh, are we in a TV timeout? Is that what we're doing here? We're going to take a short break. When we come back, more action from the high school all star game that is known as the Subway Senior Bowl. One by one, they all went down. And now it's down to this. Lewis Tyson is on pay-per-view. This exclusive event is available only on Shaw Digital. Don't miss out. Get digital today. Where will you be when history goes down? Welcome back to Shaw TV's coverage. Hucklack back to punt. Good snap. Lines it up and makes a solid kick. It takes a bounce back towards. Oh, it hit number 10. But still, it would be no yards. It's got to be. Did somebody throw a flag? I don't see yeah, a flag. No, there's not a flag on the ground, but it still should be no yards. There was a quick whistle. As soon as it had touched him, they blew it dead, and there's that. There is that, I believe, that protection rule. But we'll see what, what comes of this here. The referees are going to confer. Well, those possibility of things happening when the ball bounces back towards the blockers. But uh, I think we've got about eight officials out there from, from the Team Lightning coaching well, staff. Here it is. The ball bounces back towards number 10, Ryan Bartle, and touches him. Where's the flag? Number 80, number 11. There are so many people within the five yards that it's going to be white ball. What's cracking me up is that the team and the Blues coaches know the rules, yes. but they're trying to get the official <laughs> to call it the wrong way. Now, you, you might have heard through our crowd microphone some of the fans saying, where's the flag? There is no flag when they blow it dead. At the high school level, they can blow it dead on a situation like that, and the play just ends at that moment. So that is likely what the officials did. As we return to action, Teets passes the ball head, looking for Kennard over his head, incomplete. You know, I think now, the team, team Lightning has understanding that they only throw to the weak side of the field. Mm. He hasn't thrown the ball to the strong side of the field hardly at all, and the times that he has has been behind his receivers. So they're probably cheating a little bit that way. Oh, I would. <laughs> you know, it doesn't take long to pick up on a team or a player's tendencies, you know, and then the better defenders will, will notice that. And at this age group, a lot of guys lock into, they, they pre-read pre what they're going to do. Mm. Oh! As, as soon as we say that, he goes to the wide and side. Wide oh, Look at this. And he completes the pass Keep the ball. for a big first down to number 83, Adam Dubuque. I swear they have mics down there somewhere. They're listening to us. They have to. They're picking up on all the comments. Nice throw. Nice catch by Dubuque. He turned it off. They got a good game. We've got some excitement going here. This uh, play here. He nice decided catch. to go to the wide side. He threw a great pass. And that kid's got a big body, so he just blocked out the defender, made a catch, but he what, what he did after the, he made the catch was more important. So first and 10 at the 35. 
Team Thunder needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion. They complete it to Luke Kenner. Forward progress might put him about the 26 or 27, which would make it second and one or second and two. But there's only 34 seconds left on the clock. They got to work really fast. Here. Yeah, they can't be up. They can't be in the huddle too long. They've just got to make a play call and get up there and go. Yep. The whistle. He just blew it in right now. Yep. So they got to be hustling to the he, line. You can hear the coaches screaming, hurry up. 28, 27, 26 and counting. Teets under oh, this center. Is, this is too long. Taking way too long. Drops back. Looks deep. Pass into double coverage, incomplete. He had a receiver going out to the sidelines too, guys. He's wide, which, which was wide open. Mike Melillo from Calvin was out there along with Dubuque. He chose to throw to Dubuque, but uh, I think Melillo had a little more open on that one. 16 seconds remaining. The only good thing about the incompletion is that it stops the clock. Yes. However, it brings up a third and two, which is really irrelevant. It's third and goal at this point. We now, this is an all-star game. Those guys over there know who the top receivers is on this team. So they're going to cover McTavish or whoever's getting the ball over there. They're not going to look for the guy who's open, not the guy who's favored. That's why you want to get those backs in motion, maybe get them into the open pockets too underneath. Everybody empties the backfield. Hot pass to the left is complete. First down is made. It's down about the 15. Now, can they call timeout here? They've got some timeouts go. left. They don't? I think they have at oh, least one. Do. Okay. We'll, we'll see here. 11 seconds. They're going to spot the ball first. And they have to move the chains. Yeah, they've called time because here come Teets over to talk to Joe Pop and uh, Benny. So you have time for one, maybe two plays. I, I think you can get two for sure. You can milk two. At this level, you should be able to milk two plays out 11 seconds here, Sean. So they, they've got to look at uh, calling both plays, get in the huddle. they got to get in and out. And as you mentioned earlier, like they wasted about 10, 15 oh. seconds pre previous play to that by third being down play in the huddle. by being slow getting out of the huddle. And then they had a long snap count. Mm. See, you don't want a long snap count with this. You go on the first sound. You go on sound. You go on yep. one. You just first go. First sound. Hut. Yeah. Snap the ball. Let's go. But. Another exciting game here, Sean. Uh, last year, right to the end. This one's going, we know it's going right to the end here. We're 11 seconds left in an eight point ball game. Knock, the white hey, team uh, knocking great. on the door there, Team Thunder. It's a review 19 11, Team Lightning, the blue uniform team leading by eight over Team Thunder in white. 11 seconds to go. Time for probably two plays, we figure. An out and up or out and corner up would route. Work. An out and up or corner route. Anything to where you're going to throw the ball that's going to go into the end zone. If it's an incomplete pass, it stops the clock. And, and that's, that's a good point. As a quarterback, you've got to throw it where it's either caught by your guy or it's incomplete. You right. can't risk an interception at this time. Of the game. And make sure it goes in the end zone. Yeah, you don't want it short. You don't want it on the five or six yard line. You want to get it in the end zone for sure. Teets with the pass, looking in the end zone. Knocked down, almost intercepted, and but there flag. is a flag. Six seconds remaining. That could put it on the one yard line. It was in the end zone interference. If it's pass interference, it may go down to the one or two yard line. If it was in the end zone, it's automatically spotted at the one. I, was, well, I don't know, that was thrown into, I don't know who was gonna get that one. Blue 81, first down. First down oh, at on the, the one. one yard line. At the okay, one. Now. With six seconds left. What do you call, run play, pass play? Oh, I think you got to go to the left side behind uh, Wing and Plant on this one. Less. You, you got, got think so. I mean, you got Plant, who is 6'5", 300 and something pounds. If you don't run behind him right now, something's wrong with him. And you know what? Maybe get that full back up there, too. Right, right with him. you got to you got to overload that side and go behind it. And Harding is the fullback number 75. And I give it to the fullback, not the tailback. Harding, there he is. You can yep. see him coming give up. Give it to the big boy. Harding and Patterson. So it comes down to this. Six seconds remaining, an eight-point ball game. Team Thunder needing to score to stay in the game. You know, they could still get two cracks at this with six seconds if they get stopped. The handoff is to the first back, and he's fighting, but he may be stopped. He didn't make it. They're ruling him down at the one with three seconds to oh, go. Oh, they got one. They, they, they stopped. Nope. Official called timeout before the clock hit zero, so I think they might get another play. Yeah, I believe there were three seconds remaining when he when he called the play down. Yes, he did. There was. We're gonna wait I think to there's see some what they, excitement down there. Yeah, you sure you sure do. We'll see what they're gonna do here with the clock. They're gonna come over and talk to the on-field timer. 
the clock, I did look, the clock did not start on the snap of the ball. So no, it'd it be didn't. interesting what happens for when this conversation going on right there, because that is official time. We always seem to have a wild ending. Let's see if we can listen into the official. But when he did blow the whistle Please down. Please reset like the game seconds. clock to four seconds. They're, four they're seconds. Gonna give him, they're gonna give Team Thunder four seconds wow. to work with here. Wow, two seconds ran off the clock on that play. Wow. wow. Now I noticed as soon as he his forward progress had stopped, the line judge is coming in and rolling him down. I turned to look to the clock and there were three seconds remaining at that time. As Nick Benjamin is upset here, all the coaches are pretty fired up. I got a feeling that they do have one more play left. They, yeah, that, that play did they take six seconds, but it left. took more than two. It yeah. took more than two. It took more than two, but they still have one they more play left. They still would have had a play left. Yeah. So four seconds officially. Second and goal for the one. They've got to get in here. Teach with the ball. He, he keeps. Did. He goes touchdown. in. Touchdown. Quarterback kept it himself. Well, I tell you, the linebackers feel that. Built that hole where the fullbacks were going. Good call, pull it back and go. But now they've got to get this two-point convert to tie it. Now, this is the game. This is what it comes down to here. It's 1917. And they have to go for two and be successful just to force the tie. We're again not sure of overtime. I want to see overtime. Well, you gotta let the kids play. <laughs> hey, hey. And I think what they would do, I, I would think they would adopt similar, similar to CFL overtime rules. Put it on the 25. Let's play. You know, two years in a row, this game has been like this. I, I wish the fans would come out and show the, the support to this kind of uh, game. Okay, from the five, a two-point convert attempt for Team Thunder, looking to tie. They trail 19-17. Teach fakes. Passes. He's got the receiver. Can he get in? Yes. Yes, he does. He got in. A great play by the Duke to get the ball over the goal line. Elkinson oh. had him wrapped up. It looked like he may have stopped him, but he leaned forward to complete the two-point conversion. We are tied at 19. That's a tall boy now. The only thing he had to do is lean over and put the ball on the white, and that's what he did. It didn't get over. He just put it on the white, and that's a touchdown. That's as long as the ball breaks the plane, it's good. So now we're going to see what they'll do here. Maybe they won't play overtime. We'll find out. They're going to talk. Trevor Kennard right now is talking with the head referee to see what they can do. But what an exciting ending to the fourth quarter. Maybe Darcy can go find out more. We'll see if we can get Darcy Taves down on the sidelines to find out what they will do with the overtime rules as soon as the officials come off. So Darcy, if you get a chance, talk to either Trevor Kennard or one of the officials to find out what we're gonna do with overtime. Wow, what an ending to the fourth quarter. Exciting, a very exciting game again. And uh, hey, these kids, don't, they don't have that uh, uh, never say die attitude. You know, they're out there to play, they're out there to win. And they're having fun while they're doing it. Well, I just hear the stadium announcer, Greg Matthews, say that for the teams lined up, but uh, I think there's more discussion going on at the 40-yard line. I think they're going to play this one out. I, you know the coaches want to play. You know the players want to play. Yeah, they don't want to end in a tie. There you see the replay of the two-point convert. Great effort by Dubuque to get that ball in to, to tie this one up. Albrechtson had some good coverage and wrapped him up, but it was just a test of strength. Let's see if we can get a look at it again here. Here's the pass. Had him wrapped up, but then he just stretches out to get it across. And let me tell you again, another good, we talked about the receiver on the other side coming back to the ball. Now he came back to the ball, caught the ball, and then got the, the two-point convert. Okay, we're going to go down to the sidelines with Darcy Taves, who has some information for us. Darcy? Okay, I'm with uh, Trevor Kennard. Uh, tr Trevor, what's what's the protocol for overtime? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, unlike the rule um, uh, in the Canadian Football League where they play about another hour, <laughs> what we have is we have... Um, uh, both teams will, will uh, scrimmage the ball at the 25-yard line, and, and you can't win the football game on a missed field goal or, or on a punt single, okay? So if, if Team Lightning kicks a field goal and, and Team Thunder gets a touchdown, uh, Thunder wins. If both teams kick a field goal, we do it all over again. Okay, okay there you have it. That's the okay. overtime, uh, overtime ways. Thank you very much, Darcy. So. Uh, it's the shootout. They're going to put the ball at the 25. As Trevor Cairn said, a missed field goal single or a punt single will not count. It's either ha it has to be a touchdown or a field goal. That's a little different than the CFL. I mean, the CFL does use the shootout rule, but uh, 
But uh, the, the CFL also plays, what, three or four quarters? It's not sudden death, is it? Uh, no, it's it's a, it's a shootout rule just like this. Just like this. Just like what he just talked okay. about. But it, like if uh, we only do it for it, we do it three times. If they kick a field goal, they kick a field goal, and then we'll do it again. But we only do it three times, and it ends in a tie. It's only twice. Okay. It was four times originally. They, they changed the rule in the CFL to two. But here, I think they're just going to do it till there's a winner, which... Uh, do it to, so they have equal number of possessions. Whoever has more points, provided it's not a single. And I think that's a good call. I don't think anybody wants to lose this game on a, if you're on the 12-yard line in third and long and you want to punt the ball through for a second, I don't think it should. It should be a, a, a field goal or a touchdown. And you know for sure, the Lightning coaches are thinking that they got ripped off with that last <laughs> play, but they really didn't. You know, the, the uh, Thunder really did have one play left, and they, they made it, they took advantage of it. Right. It might not sneak. have been four seconds, it might have been two, but they yep. certainly, you know, had time a on play the clock. Right. Plus, yes. in the Canadian game, the clock doesn't end when it hits 0-0. Zero, zero. You get one more play You left. get one more play anyways, right? right. So, so it was just a, a matter of how much time was remaining, but they certainly did have a play. Now, the first possession in the shootout overtime, Team Thunder with the ball, backs in the eye, two receivers each side. Ball's handed off to Patterson, keeps his balance, struggles forward for about two, Here maybe three. Well, nice job of Boy and Corey Blunt on the blitz. Pick up a couple yards. This will bring up a second and seven. And not necessarily a passing down either because you might be just playing for the spot for the field goal at this point. Exactly, which means they might not run it out of the middle of the field. Right, they might take it to the hash the, the kicker likes best. You know, there's the wind to consider, all kinds of things. But we'll see if they can execute and get a first down on this play. Teach back to pass, looks left. Going deep to the end zone. Oh. oh, he dropped the ball, and it was so close to being a touchdown. Mike Melillo from Calvin, I thought that was a one in the books. We easily could have had pass interference on this because the slot who caught the touchdown or the two-point convert got grabbed and tackled on this play, and they didn't see it. They got away with one. <laughs> what a thread, though, by Paul Teets. He just drilled that ball. So we've got, I guess we've got... Uh, McTavish, Adam McTavish from Fort Francis is going to try to kick the field goal. It looks like it's going to be, what, almost about a 30, 31 yarder? Yes. They're right I in believe. the middle of the field. Yeah. So it's lined up perfectly for him as we see Melillo leave the field. This will be right on the 30, it looks like, dead center. And notice the single doesn't hurt, just they, they don't have anybody back to run this one out of the end zone. It's like they said the, a missed field goal single wouldn't count but it doesn't matter because it's good so now team lightning goes on offense they must at least get a field goal to continue the game or score a touchdown to win and as you notice everyone running out they'll put the ball at the same 25 yard line so they don't have to go from different sides into the wind every every all the elements are equal for both teams wow just a fantastic ending to this game I guess that uh, trip in from Fort Francis was worth it for McTavish as we see him on the field as Trevor congratulates him because uh, he's made some big plays here today and kicks that field goal, which could be the potential winning points. And probably one of the most exciting games he's ever played in. I'm sure he'll remember this game forever. And now Team Lightning with quarterback Merrick Lawrence out of St. Paul at the helm. Takes the ball, play action, goes deep There's right side. Bruno. Touch, oh, oh he drops the ball in the end zone. That's his third drop of the day. Two of them for touchdown. Well, they, did, they threw it deep down the sides. They ran uh, Love it the slot up the seam to occupy the safety. Went one on one. The ball was there. This kid's got good speed. He does. If it's he could learn to, to pull it in, he'd, he'd, be a, he'd be a contender. He's had a tough day, but uh, he certainly has shown us his ability to get open and get downfield. Well, you've got Sylvester in there, you've got Massey, you've got uh, Lawrence, uh, you've got Lovett, Durham, all had big games offensively and special team-wise. Lawrence could have a... Rolls to his right, goes down for Bruno again. No, out of bounds. Out of bounds. That would have totally ended the game right there. That would have been it, turnover. However, we are not done. There is still a field goal attempt to come. Uh, yeah, now I think we'll put, uh, is Richard Sylvester going to kick? Or they, they looks like they're sending Tom Massey from St. Paul's out, number 28. It 
should be about a 32, 33 yarder, depending on the spot. Looks like it's gonna be right on the 32, dead center as well. Massey, the left-footed kicker, to attempt to tie the game and force a second round of shootout. Ball snapped, pinned, booted, is it enough? It is good. That was an exciting three. Yeah, because that barely got across the crossbar. They all count the same when they go through, though, so we've Don't got another round of shootout going here. Certainly the fans that have come to this game have been treated to a lot of action and a lot of excitement, and we're not done yet. I think Cardinal Bruno better go over and give Tom Massey a little pat on the head, <laughs> bail them out to give, give him another opportunity here. So Team Thunder back on offense. And Ryan Caldis will get a try in overtime here. Pitch to Patterson, gets a block, kicks it outside and gets stuck. What a play by the corner. Sean what Miller out of, says Sturgeon Creek, but I think he's out of Oak Park. He's got Sturgeon, must be out of Sturgeon Creek. Did a nice job, sat there, fought off the block and made a nice tackle for a loss of, was it two? Two, maybe three. We'll wait for the spot. Yeah, it is two, so. You, you always try to teach a defensive back to get around the receiver and get upfield on the run play. He did a heck of a job. Now, called to center center again. Backs split. Two receivers each side. Called this deep drop. Pressure coming. Called this steps up and runs. Trying to gain some yards. Gets to about the 23, maybe the 22, to give his kicker some more. Uh, uh, some field, uh, shorter field to work with to and attempt Sean, to Sean, do you notice when he was scrambling, he was running towards the sideline, stopped, knew that he was going out, out, of, the, out of the area for the kick. And cut it back Ran in. back to the middle of the field. Smart thing. That's a really heads up play. Got McTavish out there again from Fort Francis, the 30 yard this time. And the last one was, I think, a 31 yarder. So we'll see if he's successful again. The lines are down. Here's the snap, the pin, the spot, the kick. It is wide right and through the end zone. There is a flag. We'll see. This could this coming from could back be there. Look, could be defense. And one of the defenders has got his hands on his head, so it's possible that it is against the defense indeed. Was it? Did they have Procedure on the defense, rushing said, seven men. That was one of the agreements they had, that they had to restrict the number of people that could rush on special okay. teams. Okay, so. So almost like the fake punt. Shift. Yeah. Oh, this man. Yeah. Rushed too many people. This man here has seen his share of pressure kicks, it's Trevor okay. Kenner. Why would you? Yeah. So now, the attempt will come from about the 25 yard line instead of the 32. Or the 30, I guess it was, so a little closer and a chance to redeem himself here with the attempt. The kick is up and the kick is good. Redemption. So once again, three-point lead for Team Thunder here in the second shootout overtime. Team Lightning to go back on offense. And once again, a penalty hurt Team Lightning. Once again, a penalty hurt him. The first penalty put the ball on the one-yard line to give them the touchdown to go uh, into overtime, and now this penalty. And in the first quarter, they had a touchdown taken off the board by penalty. Yeah. So, so that, that's been too big. Uh, that's a lot of points. Uh, that's 14 point swing on that. We had a look at that field goal again. It was good. And now, Team Lightning on offense must at least get a field goal to continue overtime. A touchdown would win it for them. Lawrence under center. Hands off to the big man, it's Patterson, he runs outside, he's got room, 20, down to the 15, fights for yardage and gets out of bounds, close to a first down. Richard Sylvester, we, he had the big touchdown run earlier in the game, he just squares up and puts his head down, picks up, and it looks like uh, first down, so they're inside the 15-yard line, on the hash, which could be critical less. What a very, very smart offensive call. You know, get the ball, put the big boy back in the game and give him the ball. And especially after the first series that came out last overtime, the first overtime, they threw twice to the end zone. My fault. I had said Patterson. It was Sylvester, indeed, who carried the ball. And he gets the call again, and he pushes upfield. 
gets to about the 10. Kevin Brick on the tackle. He's made some fine plays in the secondary. It looks like he's shaken up on that. And again, Richard, who said, goes 200 plus pounds and uh, good size and speed. Quickly coming into the game is number 32, Bali Batal. And it looks like they'll uh, have to take a look at uh, Kevin Brick here for a moment to see if he's okay. But pickup of about five again for Sylvester after the 10 yard run earlier. You know, it was really funny, just uh, the series before this, Sylvester standing on the sideline on the bench, getting the fans involved. You know, he's got the towel waving, he's trying to get them all excited. He gets back in the game, that excitement carries him through. He's just pounding over people. Well, I think uh, here's an interesting discussion going on there. If you're going to run, if you run to the right side and you pick up three or four and don't get the first down. Richard, We're gonna try and listen in here if we can. Well, we, uh, you know, if, they, if they don't pick up the first down, now that angle for the field goal changes. So you have to kind of think if they're going to run. Go left. Like you're running out. Okay, go let them take it away from you. And this is such a tough decision. You know, if you if you are going to run, you want to get the first down. Obviously, you want to try and continue to drive and get in the end zone. But if you are unsuccessful, you have to be prepared to set yourself up to continue this overtime. To recap, 25-22, Team Thunder leads it, Team Lightning behind by three in this second shootout overtime. Second and five at the 10-yard line. Lawrence at quarterback. Takes the snap, hands off to Sylvester. He fights ahead, he's got the first down and more. Now things look good for Team Lightning here. Oh, very good. First and goal at about probably the two. And they're just going to keep That'll pounding the big boy. We should, we should just give the ball. He's the one this whole series. He's carried it every time. You might as well let him finish it off. And if I'm on defense, I put everybody on the line of scrimmage. <laughs> I put my linebackers on the line of scrimmage right now. Yep. Let's do. You, you got to stop the run. Let's see who can make a play. And that's what they have. They have everybody up on the line. Look. Lawrence with the ball. Hands off. Sylvester. He stopped. Picks up maybe one. Ball was at the three. So a good hard fought effort there by Sylvester. <coughs> well, at this point, I think who wants it the most? If that yeah. offensive line wants to come off the ball and knock that white team back, team, team Thunder. I mean, that's what it's all about. And as a defensive line, you've got to get down, fight and scrap and don't let any, don't lose any ground and try to Stop that initial surge by that offensive line. This is a key play. They've got to at least get a stop here on defense. Sylvester Easy runs. He's touchdown. in. Touchdown. <laughs> Team Lightning wins the 2002 Subway Senior Bowl in the second overtime, taking it 28-25 over Team Thunder. What a, what a game, I, 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 we're kind of making each other game. speechless. I don't know what to say, that, that was a great exhibition. Of, of, you really hate to see anybody lose in this kind of a game. You really hate to see anybody lose. But as much as you credit Team Lightning for the win and, and some great plays, you've got to give credit to Team Tender for fighting back on that last drive, scoring the touchdown and the two-point conversion to get, to get it into overtime. And we're going to get a look at this winning touchdown here in a moment by Richard Sylvester out of Oak Park. Now notice that he takes it off, off, off tackle this time. Before he tried to go in between the, the guard and the center hole, which was very packed. He was a smart kid. I'll take it outside where it's a little weaker and get in the end zone. And he got hit at about the half yard line too, kept those big legs going and broke the plane. What a, what a great game. Well, but as we saw last year, Sean, both teams, there's no quitting these kids, and they just keep going. A good example of what Team Thunder had to score, and they, they tied the game up in the last play of the game, had to get the two-point conversion, and then a couple overtime back and forth with field goals, and then finally Team Lightning puts it in with a touchdown. Two teams have lined up on their respective uh, yard lines, and it looks like we'll have the presentation of some awards here in just a moment. We'll try and stay for this if we can. We'll just wait for the public address announcer to get going here. But a fantastic game, 28-25. Team Lightning wins it over Team Thunder in the second shootout overtime. 
I'd like to call upon Ms. Crystal O'Brien, the general manager of the subway located at 870 St. James Street, right across the street, to present the Subway Player of the Game Awards. First of all, the Subway Offensive Player of the Game Award is to be presented to number 34, Richard Sylvester of Team Lightning. Good choice. Well deserved. Good choice. Richard had a total of 98 yards rushing this afternoon, as well as numerous other chores on the field. Including two touchdowns, including the winner. I'd also like to now present the winner of the Subway Defensive Player of the Game Award, selected by head coach Brian Doby and the University of Manitoba Bison's coaching staff, to number 23, Corey Hucklack of the Thunder. Who Another led all choice. defensive players in the game by a score with 12 tackles. Oh my goodness. And a lot of those were for losses. <laughs> and a lot of them were solos. <laughs> fantastic day by both of those athletes. Actually, all of these athletes have had a fantastic uh, day here. Bringing much excitement to us here at the stadium and those watching at home. And now I'd like to call upon Mr. Trevor Kennard, the president of the Winnipeg Blue Bomber alumni, to present the 2002 Senior Bowl Championship Trophy, the Jerry James Trophy to Team Lightning. There's Merrick Lawrence, who uh, led that touchdown, that game-winning touchdown drive, quarterback from St. Paul's. And behind him, Billy Fan. Deepak Sharma from the Maples, Corey Huckluck from Oak Park, Corey Blunt, and Will Lovett, who had that exciting punt return. And a few exciting catches, too, as well. Well deserved on the victory. Team Lightning in blue, the winners today, 28-25, in a double overtime shootout. A lot of, uh, with last year and this year, I don't know what we're going to do next year, Sean. They've had two exciting game, last play, Again, similar type things that it, I look forward to next year to oh. see what's going to happen with that one. Well, we can only we can only imagine. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we'll have a recap on the action. And some final words. You're watching the 2002 Subway Senior Bowl on Shaw TV. With Shaw's pay-per-view, you can order the movies you want from the comfort of your home. And you're always guaranteed the best seats in the house. Call Shaw to find out more or visit shaw.ca. National Geographic. 113 years. 6,000 expeditions. A legendary commitment to those who dare. Now the National Geographic Channel brings a world of experience home. The National Geographic Channel. Enjoy this digital channel today. One by one. They all went down. And now down to this. Lewis Tyson is on pay-per-view. This exclusive event is available only on Shaw Digital. Don't miss out. Get digital today. Where will you be when history goes down? Why are people choosing digital cable over satellite TV? With digital cable, you get all your local channels. Satellite TV, 
Probably not. Digital cable means great picture and sound with no outside dishes or antennas, plus over 200 channels, interactive features, hassle-free additional outlets, and local customer service that's guaranteed. No wonder people prefer digital cable over satellite TV. You get more stuff without so much stuff. Welcome back to Shaw TV's coverage of the 2002 Subway Senior Bowl, a game that has just concluded and was won by Team Lightning 28-25 in a second overtime shootout. Some excitement here at the stadium. And uh, I'll start with you, Les Brown. Uh, Les, some of your thoughts on the action that we witnessed here today. Oh, I, you know, like, this is my second year of coming and watching this. Mm. And two years in a row, I've been totally excited about watching these guys, these kids play. They play to the end. They never say die, and there's just uh, tonight there shouldn't have been a loser. Mm. You know, both teams should have went home very proud of what, how they played on that field. And really, Ron, both teams do go home winners. We were talking just moments ago about how last year's game was exciting, went down to the final play of regulation. This one goes in overtime. Uh, your thoughts on it? Uh, some pretty exciting football. I, I thought it was great football. You know, the enthusiasm of the kids there, mm. they, they give it their all. Uh, we went down to the last play of the game, descended into overtime, and then the, the nice drive by by the team in Richard Sebesto's touchdown. But I think it, it says a lot for the, the quality of the athletes that we had playing. Again, we talked about the criteria. They had to be graduating players. So their work ethic on the field and in the classroom is, is just a great example of, of the state of, of, of our game at this point. Mm, certainly some exciting plays. We, you know, we, we talked about the, uh, or we talked throughout the game about the play of uh, uh, Sylvester and Hucklack. Uh, there was also Lovett who had the big return on Team Lightning, but also some players on the other side. Uh, maybe some of your thoughts on some of the outstanding players and plays that we saw. Well, you know, I, I have to take my hat off to Sylvester, you know, who uh, a lot of the coaches didn't think that he was uh, – showed what he had. Mm. You know, this kid, when he got through the line of scrimmage, his feet kept moving and he just ran over anybody who came near him. So uh, I really take my hat off to him and to Lovett, who uh, – you can't teach guys to come back to the ball and catch the ball like he does with his hands and not letting the ball get to his body and then turning and making plays happen with it. I mean, these kids are going to be looked at in the future in the CFL somewhere, hopefully here in Winnipeg, but somewhere they're going to be looked at in the CFL. And, Ron, some of the, the people that stood out in your mind today. Well, besides the ones that we've talked about, you know, from the winning team, I look at Team Thunder. I thought uh, Luke Kennard had an excellent mm -hmm. game. He had the touchdown catch, the convert, the field goal. Uh, Ryan Caldas from Riveries threw the ball extremely well. And, and they just did things that they had to do and kept coming back, coming back. Uh, their defense played well when they had to, made stops. So their offense put the drive together at the end when they needed it. And uh, it, was, it was very exciting. I, I, as I mentioned you off air, how do we top this for next year? I don't know, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it, it as well. It was a fist fight back and forth. <laughs> which I like. That's what it's all about. Great competition. <laughs> a little bit of blood. Oh, this is lovely. <laughs> a lot of pain. It was it was all worthwhile. And, and two of the people that really uh, excelled well today are with Darcy Taves on the sidelines. Darcy? Uh, thanks. I'm with uh, Corey Hudluck, the defensive player of the game. You you were everywhere. I even think I saw you serving hot dogs in the catering. How, how important is it to come out big in a game like this? Uh, well, it's just fine with all the guys being out here, and I just got to make the plays. Like, the, court, the other three linebackers, everyone was there, and I was just doing my job and making the plays. It's got to feel good. You got it. Oh, yeah. This was an intense game, great game. Good job by all the alumni coming out and helping out. It was just a great time. So, Defense wins games, but offense puts scores on uh, Richard uh, Sylvester. Come up with two touchdowns, especially in that uh, the tense overtime. It's got to feel good. Oh, yeah. Once again, credit to the line, though. They stepped it up in the second half, and they just bowled their way. They willed their way. The end, and uh, I just followed their way. Uh, coming, coming up for the last one, kind of describe that last touchdown. Uh, Coach Hucklock just told me to put my head down and just go get some. That's what I did. Okay, thanks a lot. With uh, Corey Hucklock and uh, Richard Sylvester, the defensive and offensive player of the game. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Darcy. Some interesting comments here from uh, Sylvester. Coach told him to go out and get some, and he certainly did. He got every yard on the final 25 there on that last drive. And... Uh, you gotta like a kid with that kind of attitude. Well, you know, he doesn't say much, but he does a lot, you yeah. know? They asked him before, what was the game plan? Get the ball back, <laughs> you know? Simple yeah. enough, get the ball back so I can get it, give it to me and I'll score. And that's what he did, you know? Um, this team right here showed a lot of fight, you know? From the beginning, they came out with a lot of excitement. You know, they were more excited than the other team, I think, mm -hmm. and that's what carried them over to get the early score, and then they had to fight back. 
and then they went in at halftime, came back out, they fought back, took the lead, and then kept fighting through the whole game. You gotta love games like this. And this is high school, you know? You gotta think, these kids are gonna go to school somewhere and they're gonna make a big uh, impact with somebody make a big impact on some programs and so maybe uh, Ron as a final word uh, talk about the Subway Senior Bowl and some of the contributions it's made to high school football overall. Well I think you know we've always thought that we did a very good job with uh, pro promoting our league with our championship the partnership with Anovitz over the last year and a half has been excellent but uh, this Subway Senior Bowl is really something that puts us an icing on the, in the, in the, on the cake for the end of the season. It's an opportunity for those graduating all-star players to have one last show of what they can do and I tell you, Les and I were talking back and forth. There was a lot of good example of what they can do. They made big plays. You know, there were some drop balls. There were some fumbles, some miscommunications. But, hey, this is an all-star game. They're 18-year-old kids. And, uh, you know, leadership, lead by example. And that's what they did on the field. You know, there were a lot of momentum swings back and forth. But uh, they were right there, and they answered the challenge. And I had fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, and I did as well. And I'm sure you did also, Les. Oh, yeah, I want to thank you guys for having me, Ron. And and uh, what's your name, boy? <laughs> <laughs> the big man. And Shaw Cable. Yeah. Appreciate it. And we'd like to thank Darcy Taves, who did some great work on the sidelines. So on behalf of Darcy Taves, Les Brown, Ron Gustafson, and myself, Sean Coates, we'd like to thank you for watching the 2002 Subway Senior Bowl here on Shaw TV. We'll see you again real soon. So the, the kids are not only having fun, but they're actually going to leave here with some fundamental skills and a, a, hopefully a greater appreciation of the game.